I was looking at the actual like slide box slides this morning. Oh, through the slides. Mm-hmm. And I found a. Uh, I think it was actually Aloe Kasaira because it had a bunch of little dots on the outside and it had like the two, like, not tubes. Did uh, it have spines? I don't know. I was looking, I saw it at 40X um, and I didn't get a good, I didn't get a look at it at 100 really well. So, mm, that one's kind of broken. It wouldn't surprise me if there was Aloe Kasaira in your seat. Oh. You might want to auto brighten this contrast just so you're not okay. like fighting with it. Looking through shadows. Okay. Yeah. So when we were doing the stream last time, or we were going through the SCM stuff on Thursday actually, it's off stream, mm -hmm. you were mostly looking at 30, simple, like 30 centimeters down, 29 uh, to 30 or something. It was one of those two, 29 to 30, okay. or 30 to So now 30. we're at the top, so just for clarity, right? This is, oh no, you're back. I'm in, on seven, so I'm back, on. Back into 30. Yeah. You're going to approach it like a geologist from the bottom of the core up. Well, this is just the one where I saw the Alokasaira. I'm oh, pretty sure. looking for an Alokasaira? Yeah. I see. Hey, open set. Planning on doing a little bit longer stream than usual today. Got off to an early start. Got some of Mary's samples prepped over the week end, and um, yeah, it's a gyro sigma. That's the wrong way. I've been seeing a lot of these in the slides. You've been but seeing a lot of them, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. but. Most of them are broken. Oh no. What happened? It's gone. <laughs> Did it jump? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the third or fourth time it's happened to me that it's something that's not the Cyclotella minigina. It's kind of sad. Well, it landed somewhere. Yeah. Your new creek water sample you got Friday turned out to be full of fragilaria. Oh, awesome. Unless you don't want to see Fragilaria, I guess. I think I'm going to go to the top. Yeah, Mr. Gobu, the um, the beam actually caused it to move. So some of the time, the beam will actually 
uh, impart enough energy on, on the diatoms to force them to wriggle free from, uh, from the stub that they're on. And uh, especially if they're not completely touching the, um, the stub itself, so if they're being supported by other particles, uh, a lot of times the beam will actually cause it to get dislodged. So. Were they uh, long, skinny fragilaria open set? Did you, were they like colonies or are they um, little tiny colonies? If they're little tiny ones, they're probably not fragilaria. Probably something that used to be fragilaria. Oh, the sliding colonies. Oh, okay. Hey, you found another one. Let's see if you can keep it from jumping, Mary. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of the broken fragments of these. they were sliding colonies, like they were sliding past each other, like back and forth, probably not fragilaria at all, but would be basilaria. Uh, those are, the fragilaria have, uh, have sort of spines that hold the bowel faces together and locked in place. Um, basilaria will slide create like a they'll slide past each other and then they'll switch and slide past each other the opposite direction those are the ones that like mm -hmm. pacific plankton usually sees in her samples yeah okay yeah those are pretty cool uh i don't think i've ever seen basilaria in any of my samples but i don't usually look at small creeks and i don't look in the ocean um, so we've seen them in Pacific Plankton samples before, and I think we actually have put them in the SEM. We've seen them in the SEM before, but not frequently. Um, I mean, I know that I've seen some. I guess I maybe didn't image them. So uh, if you have a whole bunch of them in your sample, maybe you could ship it to me. We can take a look at them in the SEM. I meant to turn the beam intensity to 7, but... Yeah, you just went ahead with a straight old 10. I did. I kind of forgot that it was at 10. <laughs> it's okay. I, it's definitely You're a zoomed Monday. out, so it's not that big of a yeah. deal. Uh, if you were in a little closer, it probably wouldn't matter. It's definitely a Monday today. <laughs> Off to a rolling start. Yes. Or rolling stop. If you're new to the stream, we're looking at diatoms, which are a type of uh, microscopic algae that makes a siliceous skeleton. So skeletons made of silicon dioxide. And um, they live in the water and they're eaten by things. It's primarily they're sort of the, the grass of, uh, of rivers, lakes, and the ocean. They're the things that all of the other organisms graze on. Uh, for food. And uh, they make these sort of intricate skeletons. Hey, Kevin Steck, and hi, uh, Mario. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not downloading the image in Internet Explorer. It's uh, drawing the image as you see uh, the scanning part of the scanning electron is that the beam scans over the sample. And it provides us sort of uh, nanometer scale by nanometer scale feedback uh, from each point that it samples. And it's trying to figure out uh, the topography, in this case, of the surface by using an electron beam. And if a lot of electrons make it back to the sensor, then it ends up sort of a bright spot. And if very few end up coming back to the sensor, then it makes a dark spot. And so as it rolls over the sample, 
goes back and forth. It builds the image. Did we receiving this under Wabash River up here, or W? Was yeah, it the W? W R T H. I think is the. And then you'll need to change that to go. I think it's go up to J R S. Oh, yeah. And then Wabash River is its own. Yes. dial-up, uh, it's actually sc scanning pretty quickly, if you think about uh, nanometer scale movement uh, by the electron beam. Um, also, uh, the said... instrument is not stuck in the 1950s. We actually can't produce color because we're using electrons. Um, what is... Gyro sigma? Gyros. You need help? Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping that's what you were asking. Yes. <laughs> Hey Pacific, uh, let's see, did I make a Mario command? I did. Is it and uh, a Pacific Plankton command, of course. Definitely just kind of went with the spelling on that one. Yeah, that... we're secretly just downloading images, tricking people into thinking that we're building them. But in fact, the SCM is, uh, is just hooked up to somebody else's uh, very large image and we're just scrolling in it's an image right it just takes a while to load <laughs> <laughs> mary's definitely not controlling a hundred and sixty thousand dollar piece of equipment mm -mm. with their bare hands uh mario each scm has its own software that's from the company so the software that runs ours is called the vega tc uh that's uh, that's just the software, but it actually runs more than just this instrument, so uh, it has to figure out which SCM it's hooked up to, and then, uh, you know, the engineer, when they came, basically sort of set up all of the, the, the different components for it, but there's some controls on the SCM that, uh, software that our SCM doesn't actually do, so... Uh, but the software is all proprietary for the SEM control and the way that it sort of interfaces with users. So, but if somebody was using the Vega 2 uh, SEM, they probably would have the same software. Or if they were using the, um, the upper end um, field emission version of ours, because ours is a, a tungsten filament version. Um, then they would probably use the same software, or maybe very similar Good software. news, everyone! So, it would be something they'd be used to. <laughs> you had a sex talk. Yeah. It, uh, it's like an Etch-a-Sketch, but with electrons. That's, that's similar. Uh, and our Etch-a-Sketch only goes in one direction. So there's down. <laughs> I guess it moves over one little bit, or down a little bit, and then over each time. But we can only move it like a little bit down, and then a lot to one side. But it is basically drawing the image that we see, that we collect, uh, into the computer. So uh, in the old days, it would draw it on the actual film. Um, I was trained on, I'm old, and I was trained on a scanning electron microscope that used Polaroid film. And uh, you'd have to load up the Polaroid film each time you went to go take a shot. You'd spend all this time getting the, uh, the image to look sort of good on the screen. And then you'd push a button and then it would expose the film. And it would scan over the film and uh, allow light to basically hit the you know, translates the beam into light, basically. And then it would, uh, it would use the Polaroid to capture the image. And then we would have to take it out uh, of the hopper that it was in, basically, and uh, rub it in our hands to make sure that the chemical was completely uh, dispersed through the image. And then you'd peel it back, and you'd still get a black and white image, but, um, but it would, you know, 
maybe 50% of the time it would look like garbage and then you'd have to start over because uh, you didn't know what it was going to look like until after it took the picture. Uh, so it was like uh, five minutes to take a picture and then 10 minutes of uh, waiting for the image to cure, basically. And then you'd peel it back and you'd be like, ah, we got to do it over. Um, also, all of the controls on the SEM that I learned to use were on the actual instrument. So this is mouse controlled. Uh, Mary does all of the controls. I don't think, can you see? I can't quite see her hand. Um, but uh, there's one hand that's on a sort of a panel box that does focus and uh, magnification, and then the other hand is just on a mouse. And so all of the controls are basically done in front of her. Um, the SEM that I learned on had a mechanical stage with like, if you wanted to move in the X direction, you'd reach over and turn a knob and it would shift the gear and move the stage over a little bit to the left. Uh, and same thing to the right, you had a different knob for the right, and then you had a button that would rotate. Um, and if you wanted to, to rotate the diatom uh, that you were looking at or whatever, you'd have to turn the rotation knob a little, then recenter it, then turn the rotation knob a little, and then recenter it. Otherwise, uh, you would lose track of where the object you were trying to focus on was. Um, and many SEMs today, even today, still have that uh, where you, you can't just rotate the stage, it won't keep whatever's in this, the field of view, uh, directly in the field of view. Um, but the Tescan Vega 3 actually has a tracker that figures out and recalculates the position, puts it back in the center, so that the object is more or less always, uh, you, even if I tilt the stage, uh, it will track where the object is and keep it in the center. Yeah, it probably is some pretty intense program. Uh, did they ever use film? Uh, Good news, everyone! Oh, for the... Um, I don't know, for the... Uh, we, we have a uh, elemental analyzer on ours. Ours is EDAX. Um, and I don't know what those look like. Um, you know, what they used for those back in the day. Uh, if that's what you're talking about, Mark, I'm not sure. Oh, thank you for the follow. UFO pizza delivery. Uh, hey, that's a cool one. Do you want to uh, rotate the image? Yes. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Up here in the top where it says rotate, this? you can just yep, just click in that field, and then you've got to sort of estimate how far you want to rotate it. So. You're like this, and you kind of want yeah. it in the corner, so you want it to be like maybe 42 Please. degrees or something like that. And um, the only thing I would say is that uh, that's, that's actually probably pretty close. Um, make sure that you're always in the rotation field and not the tilt field. So you type okay. some crazy number into the tilt yeah. field, it will try to tilt it, and then you'll ram it into the... Uh, we don't want that. The, the pull piece. We definitely don't want that. <laughs> So and then I would just say you could recenter it, and now you can image it. Uh, you probably want to, yeah, do the focus and stuff over though. Yeah. So Mary's just learning uh, how to use the SCM. Really started working on it last Monday, right? Yes. Like regularly using it for longer than about ten minutes or whatever. Um, Monday of last week. We had her sort of training on it um, Monday for the feed, and then on Wednesday she came in and also, oh no, not on Wednesday, right? Thursday. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did come in no, on Wednesday for Wednesday. half the day, right? Yeah. yeah. And so she ran it on Wednesday for a while, and then on Thursday came in and ran it mostly by herself. Uh, That's not what I wanted. Yeah, it is. For focus, you probably get there. I feel like Mary's gotten a pretty good handle on the instrument pretty quickly.
probably need to brighten it a little. Yeah. Oh, there's something right there, too. It looks like a leather sheath, whatever we're looking at. This is a diatom. Uh, do you want to tell them what genus that is, Mary? Cirella, isn't it's it? Cirella, yeah. The old school name for it was... Uh, Made a plural. Mm -hmm. But um, now they're all in Cerverella, basically. Are you collecting an image or is it just scanning? Um, I I'm thought just I. Was asking. I, don't know. I was waiting for the auto. Well, oh, it's I went to this and then I kind of forgot that it was. <laughs> okay. I was waiting for the auto brightness to be done so okay. I could do that. Like I said, it's definitely a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Slow start. Uh, let's see. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Pacific. You're going to get better at the spelling now that you've had the class, you're having a class on diatoms, I suspect. Having, having spent more time looking at each uh, genus a little bit. Uh, so, Mr. Goba says, I wonder if you could automate the search capture using machine learning. Um, probably you could. Um, I mean, I have a student who does some machine learning stuff, but I feel like um, more than likely um, what people would do instead is just have it, they'd set it in focus and then they have like a tool that, the, um, that you can buy that's an add-on for the software that will just scan an entire stub basically, right? So it will just create a picture of either piece, piece by piece, or it will just take pictures and move on a grid uh, and take pictures through the whole thing. And then it probably would be easier to have it search through the grid of images uh, rather than trying to integrate it so it was taking pictures while it was doing it. Um, you know, either way, it probably would be a lot more wasteful to do things that way. Uh, I mean, it would be, Man time is probably better, but hours on the instrument would probably be a lot higher um, because a human could very quickly tell that there's nothing on the screen that's a diatom that they're interested in. And, uh, and I would guess that it would take a long time to image things fast and at a rate that has a high enough resolution for the computer to manage parts of it. So, you know, like, some things are kind of good for brute force where you would you'd want to just like let the instrument run and then um and have a computer do it but i feel like maybe humans would be more efficient at um, finding what they're looking for and also um, we don't necessarily want to image every diatom um, a lot of times when you're on the scanning electron microscope you're just looking for um, a few things and um, so maybe it's better to do that uh, if you were just trying to get like single shots of them with the computer. But I also feel like a lot of times we want to zoom in and look at some specific structure on the diatom. And I feel like, um, like that's not something a computer would ever be able to determine, like, oh, we really need to look at the strutted process on this, so some little tiny feature. Uh, you know, you need a human to sit there and do that. So, um, also, I don't think that there's like a uh, enough of a. Uh, there's not enough diatomists to actually program what you're talking about. You know, it's, if it was for industry or something else, I think there'd be a value for it. Like. If you were trying to set up an SEM to find defects in uh, microchips or something like that, then I think it would be valuable. But I mean, there's like uh, thousands at most of diatomists, and um, probably only dozens of those with SEM access to them regularly. So, you is know, this just Novicula? It's a piece of Anitia. Anitia. Yeah, just a broken fragment of Anitia. Uh, let's see. <sighs> what 
What's going on here? Hopefully you're having a good day. It looks like leather stitching around the border. Yeah, it's actually the, um, the Raythi is sitting on, uh, which is a part of the diatom, is sitting on uh, sort of struts. Uh, and it does look a little bit like uh, stitching. Um, those things are called fibulae. Uh, fibulae are little, structurally little windows, basically. Is um, that just, that's not actually a diatom, is it? I don't think it's a diatom. Or if it is, it's covered with something crusty. Okay. Um, what are the rocks? The rocks are actually uh, rocks. Well, they're silt-sized particles. So um, these samples were collected from a core in the middle of Wabash River, and the river is carrying pieces of sediment with it um, that are silt-sized particles and clay-sized particles. And the diatoms are being carried in the stream along with them. And these ones in particular were captured from uh, a core that was, uh, I don't think that's, that's anything either. Yeah. I mean, I think it's something. I don't think it's a diatom. Uh, so the core was basically downstream of a, a train wreck uh, from the 1900s. And um, it created a baffle for the current, which caused a bunch of the sedimentary particles to be, to be trapped. And then we collect the core on the sort of uh, down river side from it where the sediments were trapped. And the diatoms are a type of algae. They're silt-sized particles, so you can't see them in with your naked eye, or most of the time you can't. And um, they're roughly the same size as silt particles, so it's very difficult for us to separate the silt and the diatom uh, fraction when we're trying to prepare the samples. So we just end up having a bunch of samples that have both. I'm pretty it's sure. Yeah. 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 Tired of those. People look at the diatoms from Lake Erie, um, UFO pieces of Erie you live around Cleveland. So the Cuyahoga River did catch fire, uh, I think it was actually in the 70s, not the 80s. Oh. But, oh. um... That's the same one. Yeah, it's a piece of the... It's the same one I took a picture oh, okay. of earlier. <laughs> yeah, it is. I got really excited. <laughs> you really want to see those gyro sigma. I do! <laughs> Uh, so there's a lot of pollution issues in, in Lake Erie, and um, I have a colleague, Ewan Reeby, who studies the Great Lakes and the diatoms that live in the Great Lakes in particular. Um, actually, he studies like, uh, he's a, a phycologist, so he studies all of the algae, um, not just the, the diatoms, but he specializes in, his lab specializes in the diatom analysis from the Great Lakes. And they've got several papers that they've published on diatoms from the Great Lakes. Um, so there, there are definitely studies there. Um, if you're looking more specifically at like where the Cuyahoga River sort of enters to um, Lake Erie you know, on the shores of Cleveland, um, I'm sure that people have looked at that material before um, to try to see what kind of diatoms are in it. But, Do um, I need to change the rotation before I move to a different stub? It will automatically change the rotation when you okay. move to a different stub. Um, yeah. Okay. So, that's not a problem. There's a Minigineina um, right to the top right corner. That? Yeah. Pretty sure. It's got junk in it. needs to. The stubs are all slightly different heights, so the focus is going to be a little bit off. Yeah, it's got all the stuff in it. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner now. So that diatom there is uh, Cyclotella meningineina, and we've seen a lot of it, and Mary's actually imaged a lot of them, and she's sick of it. Yeah. She wants to find something else. 
right, Mary. Yeah. It's all, it's either pretty much like every other diatom on the light microscope has been the cyclotella or fragments of um, the Jar Sigma one. Yeah. I have yet to find a full Jar Sigma piece on any of the slides. And then you said you've, we've seen a lot of Pleurocyra in the SCM. Yes, in the SCM. You've seen those in the light microscope too? I don't think so. I don't think I've seen any yet. But I also, the samples that we've looked at on the SCM, I don't think I had, the ones that we saw the... Um, oh, the Pleurocyra in? Yeah, I don't think I've looked at those yet in the light microscope. Hugh, um, we have imaged... Uh, water bears or tardigrades in the SEM before. Um, the problem is that without a bunch of special preparation for them, so the, the skeleton, the, the outside part of the, the tardigrade is, um, it's not rigid. And so everything that's in the SEM right now is inside a vacuum. And usually the high vacuum in the chamber causes any organisms that aren't uh, like rigid structures to sort of collapse. And so when you put a water bear in the SCM, what happens is it looks a bit like a trash bag shaped water bear, um, or maybe uh, trash bags in the shape of a water bear. Uh, so it just deflates it. And uh, of course, because there's very low pressure inside of the um, SCM, but also because when it dries, it just sort of uh, turns into a trash bag looking thing. Um, but we did look at the claws in the head, which are the part that would still be maintained. Um, if you want to look at um, a water bear in the SEM, typically, you and you don't want it to turn into a trash bag, you need to um, add a bunch of chemicals that basically sort of turn the outside of the water bear's its skin into like a rigid structure usually by silicifying it, and then you can put it in the SEM. So the images you see online of water bears in the SEM, they've all been um, treated this way. And um, usually they have some sort of a special instrument as well that will help them find the right uh, sort of critical points for the chemicals that they need to add. And I don't have any of those things. Um, so we put a, we put a water bear in there and just looked at the deflated version of it and looked at its claws and we looked at its head and its mouth. Um, those are on the Instagram page. So if you, uh, if you want to check out the, the top link there, it will, and dig through it, you'll find, uh, I think that's a sponge spicule that's been degraded. Okay. Um, you'll find pictures of those uh, pieces of them. I think the water bear's head was sort of colored red and the claws were kind of colored brownish um, that I posted on there. Uh, more typically, we find them in the light microscopes. So if you wanted to see living water bears, you know, uh, gallivanting around in a sample, um, I do stream those from the light microscope from home occasionally. Uh, I will put samples that have water bears on them along with other uh, living microorganisms. Um, the SEM, everything in the SEM is, uh, is dead, so you won't see it crawling around in anyone's SEM. Um, it's gonna have to be solicified to even get in there and not look like a trash bag. Um, but yes, we have imaged them. Yeah, it's a lot of prep. And uh, usually the people who look at it, uh, things like water bears, would also be prepping the soft algae and other organisms like uh, rotifers or um, or ciliates, because uh, they would also turn into trash bags when they dry, uh, and so you need to prep them the same way, um, solidify the exoskeletons. Yeah, they can survive briefly in space, uh, but only in their um, their tun state. Um, so you know, not crawling around in space, but rather they go into their crypto-organic state and then they can handle all kinds of things in that state. They're basically in a dehydrated sort of um, 
ball at that point. And um, something like 10 minutes in space uh, in that state, and then they can be brought back to life or into, back into their normal state afterwards and still reproduce. Um, I think it, it's only been 10 minutes or so, and then basically at, at that point, I'm not sure that they can handle a whole lot more. Um, it's impressive. Um, but lots of organisms that can dry out um, can handle really high radiation and desiccation and even vacuum. So uh, there's some really cool lichens that can also handle being in outer space, being exposed um, basically to the high radiation and the vacuum. Um, so there's a number of things that it, that's actually, um, that they've tested that way not just water bears. The company. I'm going to leave you in here alone for a bit, Mary. Okay. So, try not to harass her. Uh, in the 10 minutes that I'm gone or so. And okay. uh, if you feel like telling them a little bit about your project, you know, some people probably already heard it, but many of them probably have not. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. So, I am a student here in Dr. Stone's lab, and I'm working on Wabash River samples from um, the train car incident or train wreck here in Terre Haute, um, like he was saying, and there's so just for the summer research I'm doing, I'm looking at this, but it's going to be part of my master's thesis, which um, I'll actually be looking at two other. Um, sites along the Wabash just um, for more samples, but we're wanting to look at the core that we have and see if there's any correlation between the um, like the types of diatoms that I'm seeing and um, within that, like the proportion of the different types. So we'd be able to see, um, like I'm seeing a lot of Cyclotella minigina. Um, and sorry um i'm seeing a lot of cyclotelamine agina so like that's going to have a higher proportion and maybe that's going to tell us something more about the water quality um but i believe it's i think it's cyclotella and um one other type of diatom i've been seeing a lot of indicate high <clears throat> high phosphorus so they um using like different, I guess, diatom species, like if we see a lot of things that indicate high pH or whatever, we'll, that kind of indicates that there's high pro productivity within the Wabash. So I haven't gotten to see a, or gotten to look at a whole lot of my samples to be able to see the different types, but that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, so that kind of background buzzing noise, if that's what you're referring to, that is the, um, pump that's running to keep the chamber in a vacuum. Yes. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's very slight. I didn't realize that's what you were talking about. But, yeah, there's a very... Like, when I zoom in and out, that's what it's coming from. It's coming from the little knob on the SEM controls. Sorry, I can't see the chat while I am um, looking at my screen on here. So I will look at what you guys are saying just here in a second while this picture takes. I'm not sure about using the noise canceling headphones. I know if it's just Dr. Stone in here sometimes he has headphones that he uses um, that have a micro or yeah have a microphone attached to them. But it's honestly it's not that loud. It doesn't really bother us, so yeah, it is a shame that there's a lot of rocks. They're silt sized particles, but it's in order to be able to see the diatoms, um, so like the first steps I made had a lot of stuff on them and we could see a lot of diatoms, but there was also a lot of sediment on it, which made it hard for us to actually be able to, um, like a lot of times the diatoms would go flying off, kind of like the, um, Gyro Sigma one did earlier, um, and there's not really a way to get rid of that easily. As far as I know, the SEM doesn't have a name. <laughs> I 
it's Okay, so the diatom that's on the screen right now, I'm pretty sure is the Cyclotella minigina. Um, it's definitely a Cyclotella, I believe, but it looks a little bit different from the ones I've been seeing. I don't know if it's just because I have it zoomed in a little bit more. Um, pretty sure it's a Cyclotella, though. Yeah, so since Dr. Stone actually has a doctorate, I usually refer to him as Dr. Stone. Um, just kind of, for me, it's a respect thing. Um, Pacific, I'm not sure about the Cyclotella. Um, but like, back to the professor things. My professors that don't have doctorates, I usually refer to them as professor. Um, so as far as like science goes, um, most of the professors in science have doctorate degrees, so a lot of them are referred to as doctor, like whatever their last name is. Um, when I'm talking to them, that's normally how a lot of students refer to them, but like if I'm talking to Dr. Stone about one of the other ones, since he uses their first name, like that's... Sometimes how I refer to him, sometimes it's just doctors, like, whatever, or whoever we're talking about. Um, but it's mostly, um, like, I'm not the only one that does it. A lot of other people do it. Everyone in the lab calls Dr. Stone, Dr. Stone. Thank you. Um, Pacific, I wasn't really looking at it that much. I A lot of the Cyclotel I've been seeing haven't been the outside view, it's been the inside view. So it threw me off a little bit. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm pretty sure it is the Cyclotel Minagina, but the picture also took kind of brighter than I expected it to.
How's things going? Pretty good. Is this... I feel oh. like... They're supposed to be, uh, I got those. Where'd you find us? I don't know. I feel like there's... Maybe it's an internal view of Amela Syrah. Well, see, I'm... I slid it down to seven to try and see if there's anything in the middle, and it looks mostly just blank, so... If confused. you zoom in really close to the middle, do you get pores? Not seeing anything. Just try taking a picture like that with it centered and Let's see how it goes. I think it's just a melosyra. It's an internal beat. I'm not sure about the maximum magnification. Do you know, Dr. Stone? Uh, maximum magnification. Uh, well, we can just keep zooming in until, you know, we reach some ridiculous value, but it's hard to get it to focus cleanly once we get above around uh, 170,000 times magnification. Um, I have had images that I probably could have collected or have collected at about 190 or 200,000 times magnification, um, you know. What we're looking at also sort of controls how well you can focus on it and then the beam intensity and how patient you want to be. <laughs> we had a discussion earlier about why we, why I call you Dr. Stone instead of like Jeffrey. Well, like, you know, Mary, <laughs> when you become a grad <laughs> student, uh, traditionally you can start calling me by my first name. Yes. I said, like, for me, it's kind of a respect thing, like, that's just, like, any of my teachers, like, in high school especially, like, it'd be, like, Mr. or Mrs., but I've found out a lot of science people, at least kind of in Indiana and here, like, they get, I don't want to say mad, but they feel, like, disrespected if a student doesn't call them, like, doctor, whatever they're whether they go by their first name or their last name, but... I think it's highly s sort of uh, situation that for, for students. So a lot of the students that come into my lab um, definitely come in as undergraduates, and so they're used to calling me, you know, by my last name and my title. Uh, but, like, you know... They come all the way through the master's program or through the PhD program here. More, more commonly than not, they learn to start calling me by my first name. So uh, it doesn't actually bother me. Um, I'm not actually. I'm less bothered by students in my lab calling me by my first name than I would be by a student who's in my class calling me Mr. Stone. Yeah. I find that if they don't understand what my title is, um, that that's actually a little more offensive than calling you by my first name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, you know, the, the title changed when I got my degree, so I feel like, so for that was in Cyclotella Minigini, you know? Yeah, I don't know why. I. Just I'm tired. Label it whatever you want. <laughs> they're all yes. cyclotella mini <laughs> all cyclotella. Everything is from now on. Ah, uh, shoot. That's a nice internal view. I'm pretty I, sure that that is... I um, just, you said melosyra, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a melosyra. Yeah, you, I, you said that and like my head just stored it as like minigina. <laughs> That's just where it went. Uh, I actually don't care if people get my name wrong. If 
I know that they're talking to me. Um, actually, I don't, also don't care if I'm addressed by doctor if it's not a student in my class. So, like, um, there's sort of different layers of, uh, you know, how I'm addressed. If I'm out in the public and people don't call me doctor, that doesn't bother me. If I'm in a class and there's students who are undergrads in particular who don't refer to me as doctor, um, then I find that disrespectful. Um, but if they're in my lab and they call me by my first name, I think it's fine. So, you know, people can be pretty sensitive about things. Um, I generally am not. Uh, hey, you, or uh, just as long as I know who it is that you're trying to talk to, it's fine. At least uh, I know your name. <laughs> right. I do get students who put the who call me by the wrong name, uh, like they don't know which professor I am, which I think is also funny. Um, but I feel like if you're in a class with somebody, you ought to know their name and their title, and you should yeah. probably address them that way, unless they say it's okay to call them something else. So. Also, uh, for Anakin, I wouldn't refer to her as Pupil Mary. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it would have to be Pupil and her last name, which we haven't revealed. So I don't want to dox her. I can just call her Mary. If she cares to have her last I'd... name revealed, that's a different story. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. It's going to be changing in two months anyway. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, actually, it's like a month and a half now. Oh. The days are numbered. Uh, the name for the SEM is the Tescan Vega 3. You wanted to name it Bob. <laughs> You wanted to name it Bob? No, someone on the, I think it was Anakin on the stream wanted to name it Bob. He just wants to name things. He wants to feel special. Is that just a broken... Pupil Mary's last name, yeah. Hey, little chup. Sending me a Discord message. I can't make go away. Uh, oh. Nugmaster no. says congratulations. Thank you. Um, that's a Pleurosyra, isn't it? That's that is Pleurosyra. It's broken now. Yep, it's broken. I think this is a stephanodiscus. Yeah. Or uh, no? I don't know if we're lacking active mods. That is the external view of Cyclotella metagenina. See how it has spines? Yes. Have you only had internal views so far? Yeah. This is the first, yeah. That's pretty cool. There's one earlier. Does it this show up on the stream if I No. No. Okay. They can't see into your folders. Um Is that Cyclotella Minikina? Uh, yeah, that's Cyclotella Minikina. Okay. 
that's an I external saw it, view. I saw it earlier and I thought that's what that was, but... What's the matter? I hit rename and then I accidentally hit delete instead of rename. Um, what was that one that I named Psychotelamine that came out? That wasn't Psychotelamine. Melissa Cyrus. Melissa Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a fun day. It's fine, Luke. I can, I can moderate my own channel. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Are those um, the photo portrait? No, remote portrait. No, it's central photo portrait. Central, yeah. Yeah. The remote portrait of first cyclotella mini gain is on the margin. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the cyclotella? I'm just so tired. <laughs> It looks really different from the outside now. Yeah, it's got spines and stuff. Like, this is the view that I've, I'm seeing on the light microscope, but you, know, you can't see all these. It just looks like a paper plate. Right. You don't see all the details. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> Luke, I can see the spines. Luke wants to know if you're into coffee. No, not really. Mary likes chai tea. Yeah. Mary, I, you know we have chai tea in the refrigerator here still. We do. It's the we, ginger kind, though. I might have to try that one. That sounds good. I I love the smell of coffee, but I hate the taste of coffee. Same. Um, I just think it tastes really, really bitter, so I just don't. Oh, I just don't drink it. Tastes like dirt. Yeah. Smells great. Tastes like dirt. Yeah, but I do really like tea, specifically chai tea. But Mary and I have similar tastes when it comes to drinks. caffeinated drinks anyway. Yes. Oh, uh, we all grew up. Oh, shit. We all grew up eating dirt. We know exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like coffee. Is that just a sponge spicule? Or is that, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's a sponge spicule, maybe. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of those. Yeah. Which, I mean, it makes sense, if, but... One sponge makes a lot of spicules. What is that right at, like, uh, 1230? There's a little round thing up there. Okay. On top. Uh, this one? Top. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Somebody threw a Cheerio into the Wabash River, it looks like. Yeah, not that time. Also, we're going to pass right through lunch. So if you want to take a break and get lunch, you can. I can I, take over. I probably will do that. Since we're doing the long stream today. Yes. You made it to the third stub already. Well, I kind of, I wasn't finding anything in that one, so I just kind of decided that I wasn't going to mess with it. You'd seen enough. Yeah, seen enough silt particles that, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Don't try to find diatoms on here. Mm-hmm. Everywhere in the commons closes at one, don't they? Pretty much. Okay. So you probably need to go yeah. soon. I didn't bring my lunch. One ish. So. Yeah. Kevin's text says they're allergic to coffee. I I will admit. I've never admit, heard of anybody being I've, allergic to coffee. I've never heard that. Um, I also. I talked to one of my coworkers one time, and I was not a huge chocolate fan growing up. Like, I don't know. Even now, like, I kind of have to be in the mood to eat chocolate. But one of my coworkers is allergic to chocolate, and I had never heard that before. Uh, Anna, Kim, you can actually 
uh, you can actually already drag on the screen and reposition things. It's just that Mary doesn't know how to do that. Yeah. With advanced techniques, she hasn't figured them out yet. We can show her when I take over. Yeah. After she gets back from lunch, or yeah, I'm you gonna go to here lunch. If you want. Or I... you can just hang out and eat someplace quiet. <laughs> I don't know. I will be back sometime. Maybe soon. Maybe not soon. I'm hungry. <laughs> Good. All right. um, do you want me to sleep in work stuff? It's fine. Yeah. And then you can get back in. Okay. Luke says bye. All right, let's see what we can find in Mary's sample while she's gone. I'm gonna find a bunch of cool stuff, and then she'll come back and be like, what are these? Um, normally we run the streams for like maybe two hours or so, um, but also normally I start my streaming around two, and today I wanted to get through some of Mary's samples with her, so um, she's been sort of focusing in on finding a few things and, um, uh, and so hasn't been able to see a lot of material in her samples. And also she's sort of learning, uh, just learning how to use the instrument. So um, that takes a while. So, well, the UI could still be improved. Can I go into some coffee places when they grind coffee? Wow, that's really uh, crazy. I guess because it just it uh, air, turns it into an aerosol and then... Hey, what did I find? It's a girdle view of something. super cool. What the heck is it? Right, let's zoom in and take a look at it. It's a diatom for sure. I mean, it, it looks a bit like a Peralia, but I don't know why we would have a Peralia in this sample. Sometimes you can just get some weird things that get carried in. Um, these are stream samples, and so part of the issue is that rivers are sort of just like junk piles for whatever is on the landscape, and also, um, you know, potentially... can involve a bunch of uh, wind-blown materials and other things, so... Hard to say. Hey Steve, how's it going? <laughs> Sorry, I missed this. Yeah, I thought maybe it looked like Peralia. That's weird. Uh... Can I tell you how this was collected and prepped for what we're seeing? Yes, uh, we can do that. So um, these samples were collected from a core. Uh, the core was taken from the Wabash River. 
And so originally this started out as sediments. And um, as a result, basically, you know, you just think of it like a, a bit of mud, because that's basically what it was, this sort of mud with a little bit of silt in it. And, um, and then we took those mud samples and dried them out in an oven just at low temperature to get rid of the water. And then um, they weighed the samples and uh, put them into scintillation vials, which are little glass vials that are about, I think they're 20 milliliter or 25 milliliter. And then um, in this case, I think they added hydrogen peroxide to them. And that basically just volatilizes off all of the organic material. Um, Unfortunately, when they did that, they didn't get all of the organic matter out because hydrogen peroxide is sort of a, a slightly less effective way of doing it, but it's a little bit more um, conservative with respect to the diatoms that are in the sample not getting destroyed. And later on, we looked at the samples and I thought there was still a bit too much mud in them. So we went back in and added some nitric acid to them as well and uh, heated up on a hot plate for about two hours and then we rinsed all the acid out of the samples um, using a sink aspirator uh, to create a sort of a vacuum line to pump the material out with the diatom sort of settled down at the bottom of the, um, of the vial. And then rinsed and rinsed and rinsed to get all of the acid out of the samples. And then um, Mary did some additional rinse where she shook the samples up, let it settle for about 20 minutes and then drain out all of the stuff at the top of the sample which gets rid of the clay particles. There's still a little bit of clay in here um, and we put some samples on the SEM on Monday and uh, and I think Wednesday from her stuff that still had some of the clay in them. So we then put it into an ultrasonic water bath which just vibrates the material and shakes some of the clays off of it. And then we did the same thing, but we then did uh, rinses after letting it settle for 10 minutes. And that gets rid of a bunch of the extra clay. And then rinse the samples down, filled them up with water, rinse them again a couple times like that with a 10 minute settle in between to get rid of a lot of the clay materials. And then, um, and then we just take them straight out of the uh, the little vials with the fluid so it would just be water and diatoms and whatever else that's at the bottom silt particles and we dry them onto little metal stubs uh, that are aluminum just uh, slightly higher than room temperature let the material evaporate and then um, these were prepped using a sputter coater uh, to coat everything in gold um, those are done at 50 amps for about a minute and a half and uh, using a gold target. So it creates a gold coating over all of the sample. And then we put them in the SEM. That's pretty much the entire process. Hi, little chook. See you come in, busy chatting as usual and running the SEM. I'm doing my own uh, moderation while Mary went to go get lunch. And this, I think, is a Peralia, which is a marine diatom. Uh, it's clearly not normally in freshwater systems, but uh, it's here. So that's all I can say about it. Um, the Wabash River is a little salty, uh, slightly higher conductivity. But I guess it's probably something that just got carried in and you just find some fluke stuff occasionally. And I'm guessing this is just something, a fluke particle happened to end up in the material, but um, hard to say for sure. So I'm zoom back into around 100 on the scale bar. And then speed four, beam intensity 10. And then I'm going to jump over and see what people in the chat were saying for a second, because I missed some of that. Uh, oh, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I 
they're, they're not loading. <laughs> it's drawing the picture, Prima. It's not actually loading a GIF. Uh, yeah, Mary went to lunch. So uh, she was getting hungry. And I thought best if we fed her before her hunger turned into hanger. So uh, she also has seemed like she was struggling to wake up. So uh, maybe some food will help calm her down a little, get her focused. Um, and since there's two of us and the stream started way before we normally would start streaming, uh, so normally on Monday I start at 2, um, but I just thought I would go ahead, since how we're going to be on the SCM for most of the day, and I didn't have any other plans to do anything besides SCM work, um, and Mary was here, I was like, eh, we should just go ahead and start, and then um, it'll give us a little bit longer stream, but... Um, you know, since it's just streaming while we're doing the actual work, I don't really think it's a big deal. Um, I think it's kind of nice to be able to share actual research with people. So I thought it would be good to um, just go ahead and start early. And it doesn't cost anything extra for us to, uh, to run the stream at the same time. And occasionally we seem a little distracted by actual work. Hopefully people will just be forgiving of the fact that we're doing actual research here. Um, and occasionally we need to stop and feed. Our undergrads, so they don't get too cranky. So, um, as long as I'm working on stuff with it, I'm going to play with the stigmation just a little and see if I can get that a bit better. I feel like it can be, so it should be. Really what I want is probably to look up in one of these pores internal uh, pore areas here and see if I can get that to be bright enough that I can actually focus on the little tiny pores that are inside. Co-work, exactly. You're just hanging out with us. Uh, how's the chicken coop camera thing going? Still working well, little chook? If I tighten that down just a little, I might be able to... It's nice to get to meet the Beatles. Somewhere in there. tweak that a little bit. We had played with the settings for a little while. Um, earlier in the day, I actually replaced the filament on the SCM. So when I came in this morning, I had to sort of repair the, um, the SCM a little bit, do some maintenance on it. 
the um, filaments that we use typically they cost about um, 60 or 70 dollars for a filament and uh, they usually last about 200 to 400 hours um, on our instrument we usually average a little over 300 hours so we usually do a little bit better than average um, with respect to how long the filament will um, stick around and be fine but um, this one only lasted 200 hours for some reason so I spent uh, that happened on Friday when I was getting ready to leave and so I was getting in the car and I got a message and I just said uh, I'll wait until Monday and then I'll fix it so I came in this morning and that's what I was working on trying to get the SCM back up and running and so this is a new a brand new filament on the SCM and a consequence of that is uh, sometimes after you run it for a little bit it's like new tennis shoes. It takes a while to break in. Still, it's better than the first time you streamed it, but it still buffers a bit. Yeah, I noticed the chickens would teleport in occasionally. Like, uh, suddenly they would just be like chickens there. <laughs> Which, honestly, was okay. Um, but the picture seemed okay uh, from our side. So, oh, the archer made it out to the ducks. Is that a that's at the place where you're living, or was that at your parents' place? I I couldn't gauge I, like where the chickens were. I'm assuming if Archer was there, though, you were at your actual house. Um, so he's normally chasing the chickens and the the geese or ducks uh, or is this something that just occasionally he manages to slip out into there probably if your dog had come in and traumatized them a bit uh, that would uh, make for good twitch television for people to watch not sure parents backyard okay I see. I thought you said the chickens were at your parents, so. The, the, the ducks just roam loose? You said they have a pond, and they're outside of the, like, chicken coop. They just run loose, and there's two of them? Or are they in some sort of contained facility as well? Sometimes we get samples that are just mostly dirt. Oh, they're in a fenced-in area. Okay. Do they have their wings clipped? I mean, can they fly? They have to fence it in all the way over the top. I obviously, I've never kept ducks before. Also, do your parents collect the eggs, and then uh, do they lay eggs, the ducks and the chickens? Like, do, you, do they eat eggs from them, or are they just pets? Iris Wombat, we are looking at some material. <laughs> they can fly, but they don't fly. Okay. We're looking at some material from the Wabash River, and we're looking through it to see if we can find some diatoms. And right now, we're mostly looking at dirt. This is just silt uh, from uh, the core samples. Um, and I'm not Mary. Uh, Mary went to lunch, and uh, I'm just taking over control of the SCM while she's at lunch so that she can eat in private uh, if she wants. Uh, and take a little break so she didn't have to work through her lunch and then she'll hopefully be back by one-ish and then I can probably go over and get something to eat as well 
But if I don't eat, I'll also be fine. Sometimes I just don't eat lunch anyway. I'm too busy working. So the little store that's over there will be open and I can just get some snacks. And it'll tide me over. It's like a little perfect quartz crystal. Oh. <laughs> See you, Steve. How old do chickens have to be before they... Oh, this is where she was. How old do chickens have to be before they start laying eggs regularly? And how old are your chickens, Chook? How many eggs could a Chook chicken Chook if a Chook chicken could lay eggs? funny, whenever I'm running the stream, we don't get all the comments about uh, people's genitals. In the microscope. Put a girl in front of them, people just lose their manners. Five months. Hey, Mrs. J. How's it going? I saw you in uh, just in the mini view on uh, on Saturday. We had a wedding we went to, and on the way home, I was able to kind of glance in at what was going on on on, uh, on Twitch, and I saw you dressed as a vampire in a bathtub. And I laughed really hard at that uh, idea of a vampire in a bathtub. <laughs> I hope it was a good stream. I wasn't able to watch. Um, I think the mermaids seem like a better fit, to be honest, with respect to bathtubs. But uh, I could be wrong. I mean, I suppose vampires still need to take baths. <laughs> oh, you were a shark? Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense as a shark. I thought you were a vampire. And I was like, why is there a vampire in a bathtub? Uh, shark makes a lot more sense. <laughs> uh, I should add a command for uh, people reporting themselves as lurking. Pacific Plankton's supposed to be in class right now, so she shouldn't be lurking on the SCM. She should be paying attention to whatever Sylvie is telling her about diatoms right now. Or Mark. Or whoever's in charge over there. And then uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to be uh, zooming into the class from the SEM. Uh, there's a diatom class that happens in Iowa this time uh, every year and um, it's the same class that I took in the year 2000 before I became uh, a diatomist when I was in transition to becoming a diatomist um, except for it was taught by different people uh, but otherwise the same oh that was a it's a, a sponge scleric scleric 
What this thing's called? Sclera something or other. A gemno square. Yeah, gemma square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't care about sponges. I'm just gonna ignore it. Mary doesn't want to ID sponges for her masters. <laughs> the power went out? But you still had internet? Uh, that's hilarious. I mean, I guess it's sad that your power went out during your stream. I guess if you were streaming from your phone, it probably would be fine. So yeah, on Wednesday, I'll be sort of zooming into the diatom class, talking a little bit about how the SEM works and uh, I don't think we'll capture that part on stream here, but, um, and then Wednesday, I think Wednesday afternoon, we'll look at um, diatoms from Idaho, from samples that Anna sent me. She told me to wait till she got back to start looking at them. Then she told me she couldn't do Wednesday, so maybe we'll look at him a little bit today as well. I think Mallory's in the other lab and she was going to prep some for us. So probably when Mary gets back, I'll run and check to see if Mallory actually prepped those samples for us today. Um, if not, I'll probably just make some and let them dry. And then maybe by the time we would start normally at like two or whatever, um, maybe Anna will be here. And she won't be mad at me for looking at him while she's not here. So. Yeah, from the phone, it's probably fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had your jellyfish lamps. Those are battery powered. So one thing I would say is uh, sometimes these river samples are just so full of debris that there's not a whole lot of exciting stuff on them, but... Sometimes that's just the way it goes. We can look at dirt together for a bit here. Zoom out and see if we're at the edge, which we are. So when we were looking at these uh, last week, uh, the sample was a lot denser, and it made it kind of difficult for us to see stuff. But then there was a lot more diatoms present. Mary's back. Did you get some lunch, Mary? I did. Did you go to George's? No, I got the Subcons, the knockoff subway. Subconnection? Yes. <laughs> Pretty good. OK. I'm going to finish this row and then I'll just hand things back over to you. I was just gonna say I need to go check with Mallory and see if she made us some material from Iowa or Idaho. She's not in the lab right now. She's at lunch. Okay. So I was that's where I went to eat. Swell. Put you back at the helm. Now when people come in they won't think that I'm Mary. <laughs> 
Um, have you looked at pretty much everything on here, or? I went uh, through half of the stuff, whatever half hadn't been analyzed yet. So you might go to the next one. Okay. I found a Peralia, which shouldn't be in your samples, but was. What does, did you take a picture of it, or? Uh, I took a picture of it. Normally they're in marine stuff. Hmm. Um. Okay. Well, is she over eating lunch? Is she outside? I'm not sure where she at. She just wasn't in the lab. She disappeared. Yeah. I she might be outside. I saw Eleanor outside, but Okay. I'm gonna probably grab lunch and talk with Mallory and then I'll leave okay. you in here just doing your thing. Okay. You have fun. I'll try. <laughs> Yeah, I have a hard time <coughs> talking and doing the SCM and Dr. Stone just left, but I just started looking at a different stub on here, um, just trying to find some diatoms. That's 
I think I found a diatom, but it's kind of hard to tell. I think there's just a bunch of junk, junk in it, and <clears throat> it is pretty small. I'm good, how are you? So, we didn't stream on Thursday, and I'm not sure how much Dr. Stone talked about this, um, but the, I'm looking at, um, a different, it's the same um, core, but different um, sections of the sample. And these are, this sample is a lot less dense than the other one. Um, so the original um, SEM stubs that I did, I kind of messed up on them and I had way too much stuff on them so we weren't really able to see it so now there's less silt size or there's less um, other particles on it but it's now like harder to find diatoms so I'm using a lot of my focus to look at them <laughs> so that's why I'm not really talking a whole bunch um, but I think that's just a girdle band. I don't think that is an actual diatom. Slow back down to four. one's full of other particles so it will be harder to see. So, oh, there's actually, there's something right there. Um, they're actually silt sized particles, which are in between like clay and sand sized. And one of the issues, or so like the sand particles would look a lot bigger on here than um, the diatoms are, but yeah, that's just, we're just seeing a bunch of silt everywhere. Pretty sure this is um, a cockanese. Let's see, let's zoom in a little. There we go. Let's do seven and seven. take a picture of that. Uh, 
normally when I'm working on the um, SEM and I'm not streaming um, with Dr. Stone, I look at, um, or I have Diatoms of North America pulled up, and I look at that and um, to try to identify them as I'm going. So I know this is a um, Coconese, Coconese, however you want to say it. I'm not exactly sure what species it is because I've had a couple different ones that I've only seen on the light microscope, but this is the Rafi view of it. And I've been seeing a lot of these in my samples um, on the light microscope, but I've been seeing the Arafid side a lot, so it looks a bit different from this side, so it's kind of cool to actually see the Rafi side in the SCM. I'm pretty sure this is the inside view as well. Oh no. I just, I don't know what just happened, but somehow it got out of focus. Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, I think I might have accidentally, so um, you can control the speed with the mouse and I think I accidentally bumped it a little bit and it changed the speed so it just kind of didn't want to work, but it's okay. And it's not as in focus as it was either. Oh well. He did. He, well, not necessarily abandoned. He went to get lunch and he um, went to talk to the lab tech, Mallory, about making some samples for next week I believe to look at the SEM for the stream so sometimes <laughs> I don't know if he's actually gonna get lunch because if he was gonna go over to our comments most of the places close at one but yeah he does pretty much work all the time sometimes he takes breaks for food not a very great picture. It was, did not get it focused in well enough, but it's okay. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. It's nice when they're better in focus, but a lot of these I'm just kind of taking pictures of so I get an idea of what 
um, they are and that way I can kind of match like the light microscope to this so if I were going to be like actually um, publishing them I would try to get better pictures or I will go get better pictures if I need to but um, if let me wait till this stops loading or I guess it's not loading it's taking the picture but So if you're talking about this little, I don't know if you guys can, yeah, you can see my mouse. So this little crack up here is just where the diatom broke. Um, let's go. But if you're talking, I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about. Uh, but this like line through the middle right here and then right here through there is actually the rafi. A coconut actually just. Yes, he did. Yes. It's decently small, I feel like, but it is actually the rafy side, which I don't see a lot of in the light, the light microscope. The stream been behaving since I left. Yeah, I got really quiet. I wasn't talking a whole bunch, but. <laughs> Everyone's quiet. Yeah. Oh, there's Anna. Good news, everyone! I do occasionally eat. <laughs> That's what I said sometimes. Mary's seen it happen before, so... Yeah. Now it's happening off screen. Have some uh, samples from Idaho prepared for Anna. If you're still out there, and uh, maybe if Mary gets through all of these seven, three o'clock or something. Yeah. We'll switch to those. They can't hear you very well. Um, he said that he's got the Idaho, was it the Idaho samples um, prepared? And if we, about three-ish, if we're done looking at my samples, we'll take a look at those um, samples. Salt sized particles. So, so technically silt. Yeah. Um, is this just Cyclotella minigina? Yeah, it's Cyclotella minigina. It's, like it's really small. Yeah, it's tiny. I feel like that's pretty much all of my sample of stuff that I actually like see. Cyclotella minigina is a high nutrient indicator most of the time. Which makes sense. Yeah. Considering the Wabash has tons of runoff. That's weird how that has like a divot within the particle.
Lizzie says, hello, I'm one of the regulars. Okay, I honestly do not know anything about what diatoms are. What? Lizzie. Oh. Hello. Um, you probably know more about diatoms than you think, Lizzie. Oh, she doesn't know the names of the diatoms. Oh. That's right. Mary just That's barely okay. knows the names anyway. I, yeah, I'm not very good at identifying them, so it's okay. Getting better, but... Are hard. This is my first time looking at diatoms. Normally we look at centipedes and stuff. I keep seeing things that I think might be diatoms, and they're not. That's a diatom? But yes, this is a diatom. Do you know what that one is, Mary? Is that, um, we saw it in one of the last samples. We've seen it a lot. Yeah, and I'm, is it the one that we had to draw up on the board? I can't think of the name of it. Um. Turkey and cheese. I feel like that sweater's a little large on you. Yeah, people call my trench coat. By people, I mean me. <laughs> What's going on? What have you found there? Hi. What is it, Mallory? What is it? The genus. Clear it up. I'm sorry, that was a little aggressive. <laughs> that was a little aggressive on my I part. I was trying to I'm get sorry, Mary. Mary. <laughs> Mary, fix it! <laughs> Well, gonna take a picture of it. Oh, wow. So. You couldn't tell her what it was. She's revealing it now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, slowly. It's like slowly. that one. Um. Yeah. It's a baby reveal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a gender reveal. Yeah, like a gender reveal. Well, without all the like the massively. A genus reveal. It's a gender. <laughs> Should have a sick. You know what? I'm making a new little like group on the discord called genus for me <laughs> i'm does i'm changing the identification thing too where are we going hi hannah i'm off screen i've got my uh student assistants working on stuff i thought i thought hannah walked in i was like hannah <laughs> back from the dead yes. oh you can see the comment diatoms hannah is a musician Oh, a cat. I'm just moderating my own channel while these guys do all the work. That's what yeah. happens when you get old. <laughs> just let the kids do everything. Oh, oh. You guys ever seen um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? You ever seen that? I think so. And that one quote, that one song that plays like, like was like, oh yeah. It's that like, band is yellow. Oh, they like the color. That's the name of the band. Oh. Yellow. <laughs> is it? It's like I remember talking about it because it's not in Sinema, is it? No. Navigula. No. Simbella. No. What? 
I can surprise nobody's asked me what letter it starts with yet. What letter does it start with? That's usually what where you guys go. What letter does it start with? What letter does it start with? What letter does it start with? Like G? Like a G maybe? No. Like an E? Like an no. ensign Nemo? No. You're all around it. You can tell it's asymmetric, but you don't know where it goes. That's what I get from this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's it start? It starts with an A? No, Anna told me. Oh, no, my apologies. I remember Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The sliding thing has been copied a lot. Um, that's from Risky Business. You are mistaken, my friend. Also a boy with, like, a, the same exact haircut, so not far off. Now I'm just, like, blanking of, like, every eight. Dang. Like, Alakazire is the only one that's sticking in my head. No, that's a type of navicular. It's, uh, it's not Napros and Bella. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Okay, what's the next letter? What would that help you if I told you it's named after a Greek jug? After a what? A Greek jug. A Greek oh. jug with two mouths. Uh, 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 <laughs> what's the next letter? I think she's having a stroke. <laughs> what's the next letter? I thought I smelled burnt toast in here. Um, <laughs> there is toast. I, he's burnt. eating toast. That was the joke. I forgot they can't see it. Um, what's the next letter? M. Oh. M? Amphora? Yes, it's an amphora. Amphora, just like I said. <laughs> Someone roll that back. <laughs> or don't. It's everything you didn't say. <laughs> no way. I distinctly remember. Oh. Are you certain? Are you certain when he comes sliding into the screen and Yeah, that's risky you? business. That is risky business. I know, because, um... Because I, that's a fact that I know about things. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm trapped. It is so cold in this building. How can yes. you wear shorts? I almost brought my blanket back from lunch with me. You're cold? Ew, what is. Just huddle around the SCM to keep you warm. The SEM does not generate heat though. What is so this? This isn't a diatom, is it? Yes. Actually, I know I know plant this. Material. Oh. Oh. I know this one guy. <laughs> That's the remnants of a snail that had evacuated its shell. I think it's just some plant material. Okay. Yeah, the diatom was called amphora. And if you wanted to know what it looked like. Then too bad. There's a link. Come to make trouble. I make it trouble. So Mary's the one who's at the control of the SCM right now. And the mouthy one over here is Mallory. <laughs> no, I'm not mouthy. I'm opinionated. The chatty one. Chatty. chatty. Mallory's been on vacation. Can you tell us all about your vacation? I'm saving it. For what? For next... Oh, for the stream? For next Monday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I talked my mom's... Oh, look at that. I just found some... A tick? Some algae. Oh. From my, my anklet. So you guys know I'm nice and clean. Because you have algae on your ankle? My anklet. Is your anklet not on your ankle? Well, it wasn't touching my ankle. It was just touching my anklet. Is that just a fragment of Pleurocyra? No, an anklet is a kind of bracelet that goes around your ankle. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I never would have known that, Mallory. You're welcome. Oh. Oh, I'll look at this. Oh. Membership art is here. Yes. I have them doing all the work. Chef? I hear they can't even hear me on the microphone, so. They can't? Oh. I can move it that way a little bit. Now you'll be able to hear me just fine, probably. Give them a little. Uh, hello, ladies. Now let's get in formation. I'll just have one of my arms in the field of view. The one that just, doesn't have the sandwich in it. Just a shoulder. That way you can see me shrug every time Mallory says something. 
<laughs> Actually, Dr. Stone laughs whenever I say something because I'm a comedic genius. I don't know if I call it that, but... Mary! It's All Mary the opposite you? of a genius. The best. Where did you find us, Mary? I don't know. I think it's a girdle band. But I'm not positive. Um, Hannah, Rebecca, have you gone like viral or something? I feel like I've seen your name before. Maybe I'm thinking of Rebecca Black. Hey, Mary, Rebecca, I mean, Hannah, Rebecca has a question Can you for sing you. Friday, 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 Friday for us? No, unfortunately, that's copyrighted. She sings copyrighted um, stuff. I will tell you that in just a second, but I... I think it's something in Girdle View. It's either Nitzia or a Ropolodia. Hmm. I think it's a Ropolodia. <laughs> she can sing the Friday song. Thank God. Uh, I have to come up with a bunch of songs but... to to give her as suggestions. Can okay. you sing copyrighted songs on? Twitch, I thought that was a whole thing. You can't do it. Because whenever I would sing songs, you say, don't do that. <laughs> just in that voice, too. <laughs> you can sing copyrighted songs on Twitch. You just wanted me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <God. laughs> I would bleed into the, sorry. <laughs> you can sing them. You can sing them. You can't play them. Oh. Like, okay. you can't play music from somebody else. Or they'll mute the stream. Really? Yeah, and That's now crazy. I think actually they are doing something where they mute the stream if you play copyrighted music, even if it's your own playing of that music. So like if it's a recording? Yeah, I think that's a new change. Who sings? You can play it live. Yeah, you can play it live. Mary, tell us about your career. Yeah. So, um, it gets rid of the video part. Yeah. Well, you guys started talking, so I figured I would wait a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I'm like my major, I guess if that's what you're asking, is geology. Um, but I'm, yeah, I don't know how well you can hear me. My Mary major. Doesn't talk very loud. Yeah, I, not really. <laughs> so my major is geology, um, but I'm going. I'm doing this program called Four Plus One, where I'm going essentially an extra year, and I'll end up with my um, master's degree. So the master's degree is Earth and Qua is it Quaternary Science. Yeah. It's something like that. Um, so, like, what we're act what I'm studying, like in Dr. Stone's lab, just diatoms, um, and then. This is, I don't know if you were on the stream earlier, but uh, no, that's not Ellie. Um, that's Mallory behind me. Who do you um, think it was? Eleanor. I always think I'm Eleanor. Do we, we don't look alike. <laughs> don't no, not brown really. Brown-ish? I'm brownish. You're both like. She's more blonde You're skinny. Than you both have like the <laughs> same build. Um, You're both skinny. <laughs> You're kind of tall. Keep going, keep going, Mary. Anyway. Forget about me. <laughs> Sorry, you guys have me laughing. Um, anyway, so I, like what we're looking at is actually stuff for my project for my master's degree. Um, what was the other? Yeah, I think that's about it. Oh. Did I pause the chat? Do I? I said chat pause due to scroll. I was just trying to see what they said up there. I don't know if I messed it up or not. No, I think you got it. Okay. It just, that popped up, so I was confused. Um, is this a Nitzia? I think it's an epidemia or a rupalobia, but I need to look at it. Okay. It's hard to see from this angle. I'm just going to put a uh, no. I just have Mallory idea, but I feel like she can't do it either, so. From that angle, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if I was actually behind the screen, I think I'd be able to do it better. 
Can I guess? I want to say it's Navicula or Nitzia because those are the two most common options. I think it's Epidemia or Giba or Rocolodia Giba. I was so close. But it could be a Nitzia. I was in the alphabet at least. What are the other options? <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't just giving it numbers. <laughs> Five or four. <laughs> That's fair. Commander Shepard said, said, like, you would say, who sings that? And I said, his name's a singer, and you said, then let them sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing is impossible. He really, I really Not thought every time imagine. I was, like, humming along, I thought that I was like, we're going to be sued. We're never going to be able to be raised. <laughs> didn't want to hear me. Thanks for following us, Civic TV. Mary's a okay. good streamer. She's good on the SM. She's better than you. I believe that actually. She's also better I don't want to be me. You. No way. I don't want to be mean, but I feel like I don't know. Never mind. I'm just not. What were you I feel like it's say? gonna be. I feel like it's mean, and How's I like it mean? Mallory. She said she likes you. She said, but I like Mallory. She's gonna roast me. She's gonna roast me live on camera. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think it's probably just up our ratings here. People would like it if you just played into Mallory. It's what I do. And everybody seems to like it. Mm. That's fair. Especially Mallory. Um. So you're not gonna tell us about your vacation? No. And... This is Mary's stream. I'm saving it for mine. Oh, okay. I just came to bother Mary because I thought you weren't here, but now I'm sitting in this chair. And I'm finding out that you're like, betrayed You're like, it's Mary's stream. I'm just going to put myself in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm more like off to the side. <laughs> you're just going to photobomb the stream. <laughs> I wanted to, like, jump behind her. I wanted to creep in and not say anything at all. That was my goal. Because <laughs> I thought she wouldn't look over there. I heard you come in. You didn't know. How? You weren't exactly quiet. I should have gone like the back way. <laughs> Jeez. No, I uh, think I heard your keys. I think that's what it was. I don't know. You were making some sort of noise. I don't know. You don't it know? It was. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it. I don't know. I think it's the inside view or something. Yeah. Well, that's just Sarah, maybe. But it's got like very faintly, like a bunch of little. Areola. Every oh shoot, not again. I touched it. What happened? Uh -oh. Did you turn the dial? Oh, I didn't touch the dial. I think I. I think I. Did you change the speed setting or the I focus think so. while I was actually trying to take a picture, Mary? I think I bumped it. I'm really bad at that. I don't know what I did. You know what? We're gonna call that pulling a Mary. <laughs> I wonder if you're the only person who's ever done that. It's happened twice today, too. There we go. She's so, like back to seven. Fidgeting with the mouse wheel while she's trying to. I just bumped it with, I don't know, my hand bumped it, and I think my finger bumped the that thing. Mm-hmm. It's at seven. All right. Oh, no, it's, it's fine. We're not judging you. Now I'm. Confused. You've only been using the SCM for a week. Yeah. Now it's all blurry. It's only been a week? I thought she got on it before that. No, never. Was she in the room? I think she sat in the room once. Mm -hmm. I used it one time for Dr. Yost's class. Yeah. When we took pictures. But then the rest of it, I was just kind of chilling back here. Now she's an expert. <laughs> only occasionally. <laughs> Alright, he's not gonna touch it. It's a big paragraph. It is. A yeah, I thought you did that. I was like, who asked? Is Rebecca? Or Rebecca? Yeah. Um, Rebecca is not here. Rebecca is not here. If you have questions, you can also just ask us. It's cool. Yeah. It'll give these guys a chance to tell us all about how an SEM works. If you hear me say it enough, you'll learn. Right, Mary? Maybe. 
Mallory can tell you, but she'll tell you that the thing costs a million dollars. I did tell my it, children that. It costs. To be fair, some of them do. <laughs> this one does not. <laughs> no. Uh, that's a million dollar instrument, and uh, I get paid a million dollars a year to use it. So. I actually get paid like three thousand dollars. Oh. I'm just moving over so that... It's uh, alright. I need to go finish weighing my stuff anyway. I wasn't kicking you out. You said get, you said get out. I did not say that. Goodbye, my friend. See ya. How does an SEM work? Here, I'll show you. What we do is... Up at the top of the instrument there's something called an electron gun and it's actually just a filament and it's made out of tungsten so there's two pieces of metal with a bit of tungsten between them it's basically the same way a light bulb works except for when we put a current through what happens is it generates a cloud of electrons and if you don't remember um, electrons have a negative charge so in an atom there's electrons a bunch of negative charged particles and um, an anode, which is this um, sort of orange or red ring that you can see here, uh, it's got a positive charge. And so it basically draws the negatively charged particles out of the chamber. And then they are sort of accelerated towards our sample. In a normal microscope, you have lenses that focus the light, but we're not using light, we're using electrons. And so instead of using lenses, we use magnets. The magnets that are going around the beam actually allow us to focus it so that it stays where we tell it to go, which is basically in this uh, model down onto this little ant. Um, but the uh, we have diatoms in RSEM though, instead of ants. But the idea is that the electron beam comes flying down, it hits our specimen, and then it knocks some of the electrons out of the sample and they are collected by what's called a secondary electron detector, which is basically the electrons that get kicked out of the ant in this model are the ones that are collected by the electron detector. So that's the general idea. The beam kind of moves across the material. It scans from one side to another, which is why it looks like it's uh, downloading an image, but it's not. And um, Uh, this is what happens on the inside. The electron beam comes in, it hits the sample, and it makes secondary electrons by the electron beam hitting particles that are in whatever the material is made out of, and it kicks them out. And <clears throat> if there's a lot of material that gets kicked out, and it sort of points towards the detector, then the detector, it sort of turns the electrons that hit it into, uh, like, brightness. So the more of them that hit, the brighter the image is, and when fewer of them hit, it makes a darker image. So the same way that you could take a flashlight and pointing at something, it will hit that surface, and if the surface is pointed towards you, it looks bright, and if it's pointed away from you, it looks dark. The SEM does the same thing, so it's basically turning objects on the surface into um, how the same way we would see light, basically. Uh, in, in other words, like, um, how the electrons are essentially, the topography of the surface is being reflected by the electrons that hit that sensor. And so all these other things are also generated. We don't care about any of those because we're really just trying to get that sort of topographical information back from the SEM. And what it does is it builds an image for us sort of based on the 3D structure of whatever it is you're looking at, which in this case is at the Lassus Syrah. Uh, or diatom, T H A L A S S I O R A. Let's see, Osira. Actually, I think I spelled that wrong, but close enough. Uh, close enough. Um, so it's basically just using electrons in place of, of light um, to see, but because electrons don't have a color, they're outside of the visible light spectra, 
then um, effectively all we get are black and white images so we see brighter or darker we don't really see like um, red blue green or anything along those lines so um, the reason that we use a scanning electron microscope rather than just using a light microscope is light has so you probably want to make the box a little bit bigger and point it over one of the pores not not the middle one the middle one will make it hard for you if you put it over one of the either the things out here yeah or <laughs> it's the right mouse button drag there we go <laughs> sorry i didn't realize what you were struggling with I was like <laughs> uh, the reason that we use electrons rather than light to see is that um light has a, a physical limit um, which is the wavelength that determines what's the largest thing you can see with it and because light has a, a wavelength we don't really think of it that way but it actually does have a wavelengths that range between like 400 and 700 um, nanometers um, that limits what we can see and so oh you need to start over Mary uh, sometimes it gets really challenging when you don't have a lot of uh, structure to look at, so don't get um, too upset. Just focus with the, you know. No, you I was can trying probably... to use the focus to zoom in. <laughs> oh, that's what happened? Yeah. So. I was trying to see if we <clears> could Yeah, you see... can zoom into those. You can see yeah. stuff. Let's do it. So they should have little uh, pores on that surface. That's what I was trying to focus. You had them there for a second when you first zoomed in. They're very faint. There. So um, the reason we use electrons rather than light is that uh, the wavelength of an electron is very, very small. There we go. And so we don't have the same limitations with respect to resolution that you have with light. So. Um, so it allows us to get images like these, where like right now our magnification is um, 30,000 times magnification. And when she was zoomed way in, we were at like at 100,000 times magnification. Um, on a typical light microscope, you can't usually get um, images above around 1,000 times magnification. So we're right now we're at 125,000 times magnification. Yeah. So that's like 125 times the power of a light microscope. And um, Mary just did that with the twist of her finger, right? Like, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the real uh, power for it. Also, unlike a normal microscope, normal microscopes have a lens and, and uh, an eyepiece with a fixed magnification. So you either get two times, five times, you know, 20 times, 40 times, 100 times. You have to choose which one you're using. The scanning electron microscope allows us to just make adjustments on the fly. So she can zoom out where we are now at 480 times magnification. Um, this is a view you would be able to see in a normal light microscope, um, you know, if we looked at one, a, a prepared sample. And then um, she can zoom in however far she wants to take it. You know, 125,000 times is not outside the realm of, of what this thing could easily get and see clearly. Yeah, Mary has all the power right now. Uh, yeah, we were looking at Fultiportula, uh, Pacific Plankton, and I think it's, um, I think that was uh, Adelasia Syra Weissflogii, or something in that range. Uh, some sort of Adelasia Syra, though. It's kind of weird how it has, like, all these ridges like it's like it got caught in something yeah. so how oh like... those are the little milled edges of the aluminum stub itself oh. so when they make the stub um, they mill it and gotcha. you're just actually seeing it get lined up in this there's very really slight depression nothing in the is impossible of not the metal. if you can imagine it. and they're just the water came to rest basically between those depressions mm -hmm. or in those depressions um, and so that's why it has that weird pattern. It's kind of if cool. I just put a metal stub in there with nothing on it, you'd be able to see the um, the depressions on it from when they milled it to flatten it, basically. 
Okay, I think I got all the questions, and I think I answered, uh, Hannah, I answered your second one without even reading it. I just sort of spit it out <laughs> about why, why we use it rather than light. Um, there was a question up here, I think, earlier when you were talking. Oh, Lucy had something. I don't know if you saw those. What kind of electron guns are in the rear of a CRT TV? Uh, they're similar. Um, they're designed a little bit differently, but uh, the old school... Um, uh, capo ray tubes um, that they use uh, would also shoot electrons basically across the screen. So people have taken those old TVs and taken the uh, electron guns out of them and used them to make homemade SEMs on YouTube, which people ask me about all the time. And I think, oh yeah, that's cool, except for like I've already got an SEM and I didn't have to put it together with duct tape. Um, you know, also I'm not an engineer, so people are always interested in the engineering aspects of, uh, of the SEM as well. And um, I just want to be able to take pictures of tiny stuff. I don't really care about the, you know, engineering components, but there's a lot of people who are interested in sort of how an, how an SEM works. Um, so I can explain it well enough to kind of get you to the point where you understand what we're seeing and why we would use it. Um, I can also explain all those other particles that came off of the sample, um, but we're not analyzing or capturing any of those right now. We can. Um, this device could also capture backscattered electrons and also the x-ray particles that come off. Um, but uh, they usually give, both of those things give us information about sort of the density and the material type. And instead of the topography. And um, what we're looking at is mostly diatoms, so we don't really care about what it's made out of because we already know that they're made out of silica. So, um, so with, did it just, did you just knock one? Is up, it was really high off of the surface, so. Yes. Makes me kind of sad when it does that. And then, Is it a destructive way of looking at things was his other question. Oh, is it destructive? Um, in the most specific sense, yes. It's destroying the sample, but it's just knocking a few electrons out. And every one of the sample has, you know, gazillions of electrons in it, in the material. So if you just left the beam focused on one thing, and you put the beam intensity at the highest level, and you put the accelerating voltage at the highest level, and then uh, you came back in a few hours, you could burn a hole into the material um, that you could see. Um, you know, especially if you put it in a really small area, if you got really close to the surface and, and focused it, you could, actually, um, you could actually burn a hole, but, um, in most of the stuff that we're looking at, we don't have the beam focused on every specimen for very long. And um, so, you know, it's like taking a few drops out of the ocean. You're not really gonna notice it, uh, you know, unless you leave it on there for a really long time in a really high, intense way. It's not gonna enough, knock enough electrons out that you would really think of it as being truly destructive. But in a very like clinical way, you are we are actually sort of destroying the material a little. Um, but it it would really take some odd behavior for us, you know, to to functionally destroy what we're looking at enough, um, you know, that that it would matter. Are you using SEM or also TEM? We are only using an, a scanning electron microscope. A transmission electron microscope is useful if you're looking at like the internal parts of cells. If you wanted to look at like where the mitochondria were or where the Golgi bodies were or something like that, um, a TEM basically sees sort of a, and it's sort of more like an X-ray. You're looking through the material and um, and an SEM is more like a typical 
a stereo microscope or like a pair of binoculars. Like you're just making it look really um, clear, but you're looking at the surface of it. Um, and so, you know, depending on what you might do with it, uh, they have different purposes. And generally speaking, I don't ever look at the cellular material to try to see like what's it composed of um, or like what are the internal parts of those cells. Is that blue, sir? Is Can that... you zoom in just a little bit? I don't know for sure. It doesn't look like it has a uh, I don't know what that is. That helps. Yes, it's Pleurocyra. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's hard to tell when it's slightly out of focus, but also yes. that's um, the it... acelli look very weird. So yeah. it's an it's... external view of Pleurocyra. It's like right there got damaged. Uh, it looks kind of weird. Pleurocyra. All right, uh, okay. Is this diatomaceous earth or a precursor to that? Uh, this is, um, so diatomaceous earth is technically what we refer to as diatomite. And diatomite usually requires that the um, source material is something like 80 to 100% diatoms. And our sample is more like 5% um, <laughs> diatoms. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, at best. So uh, because this was collected from a river, um, and it was collected in, in a state where it was basically mud when, when we originally collected it. And we got rid of all the organic matter using some chemical digestion techniques. Um, and then what we're left with is sort of the residue, and that is mostly silt-sized plastic particles or like pieces of, little pieces of rocks, and then diatoms. Um, so if you compressed it and you waited for, uh, you know, thousands of years under pressure and some elevated temperature, it would make a rock, but it would probably make something more like siltstone rather than diatomite, um, because it's mostly silt-sized particles. And um, that sort of determines whether you would refer to it as diatomaceous earth. So the stuff that you buy in the, in the um, hardware store that's diatomaceous earth that you would sprinkle in your garden to get rid of snails or, or slugs or ants in your yard from an anthill, um, that's basically almost entirely diatoms. And usually it's mined from materials where the diatomites are exposed at the surface um, where there's old rock material. So there's a whole bunch of these in Idaho, for example, and uh, Nebraska has some where the rocks are a little bit um, younger than what we have here exposed to the surface. And, um, and they, uh, there's some lakes that used to be there where the diatoms are now, the fossil diatoms are now exposed as diatomites. I know this isn't a diatom, but is it some sort of like organic material or is it just a really weird rock? I think it's clay. It's like it's like a clump of clay. It's two the... layers? Yeah. I think those are like sheets of clay. Gotcha. Clay sized particles. So the stuff that we're looking at is uh, less than a hundred years old or maybe around a hundred years old. Um, this was collected from muds. The diatomites that you would look at, um, if you if we took some material from a hardware store and sprinkle it out, those are probably like 10 million to 7 million years old. They're really old. Um, and we have looked at some, and I do have some back here in our stack of stuff, because uh, I regularly look at stuff that's 10 million years old. Um, and but like if you go back to two weeks ago and look at the stream, uh, there's a a number of samples that I looked at were uh, old diatomite samples um, that are seven, six to seven million years old. And also, if you keep going back, there's another one that's several that I've uh, done that are 10 million years old. So those are actually what we would think of as diatomite or diatomaceous earth. This is just more like diatom 
some diatoms in with the other material. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, it, it's kind of like viewing stuff with a light versus a laser. Um, a light gives you the surface reflection. It's more like a light and an x-ray, basically. Yeah. So, uh, Spicule, yeah, that's a sponge spicule. They're kind of boring. <laughs> sponge pickles are boring? Yeah. Yeah. But they're really good at tricking me into thinking they may be a diatom. We're looking at the skeletons of diatoms right now, yeah. So. Um, and diatoms are organic, their skeletons are inorganic, though. So when we processed the material, we got rid of all the living parts. Um, there probably weren't any living diatoms, or even much organic matter left over from the diatoms after a hundred years or whatever where they've been in the sediments. Is that a Melocyra? This one? Yeah. It looks like it could be. Oh no. It's a clump of carbonate, I think. <laughs> just a, what? Just carbonate, I think. It's just rock. A rock particle. Yeah. Could be a really big sponge spicule, maybe. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to answer questions. I'm trying to keep up with the questions. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think I caught up. Uh, if I missed your question uh, and you you would like to have me answer it, you can just go ahead and ask in a chat and I will try to keep up with it. Uh, I have a little tiny box here that available to me where I can sort of see the... <laughs> uh, Scrappy Tail the Squirrel, I, uh, I haven't seen... I saw them yesterday and they were fine. Uh, I have not seen them today. I got up this morning and had to run in early to fix the filament on the SEM. Uh, so I changed the filament. And uh, Mary was here and wanted to get started on her samples, so we just started really early. And right now we're looking at her samples, and then in another hour or so we'll keep streaming and we'll probably look at some uh, more diatom-rich material from, um, from a stream in Idaho. I know this is just a fragment, but are you, are you able to tell what it is, or is it just too... I have no too, idea what that okay. is. I wasn't sure if it was, like... I know sometimes you can... Sometimes I can use my magic? Yeah. Uh, I can't see enough of it to figure out what that is. You know what makes samples more exciting? Uh, mustaches, yes. That is true. Uh, a mustache will always make the samples more exciting. We can't put the mustache on until we find a diatom, though. Yeah. Find us a diatom, and then we'll slap that mustache on it. I'll try. You'll try to find us a diatom, or you'll try to slap the mustache on it? <laughs> I'll try to find a diatom. <laughs> there, I feel like it's you're easy to been... put the mustache on once we have the diatom. Yeah. That's just a click of a button and a little dragging of the mouse. Does it have to be a new diatom? Because I know there is one near the center. Anything that would look good in a mustache would be fine, Mary. That's a circle one. You feel like it has to be circular in order to get a no. mustache? No, I feel like a circular one isn't a good one for a mustache. Oh. Unless it's a pleurocyra that I had the other day. Pleurocyra would be good with a mustache, actually. Would, especially uh, the one that had the smiley face. Yeah. I don't think this... That's not... That's a phytolith. And uh, I will not tell Dr. Yost you did not recognize that as a phytolith right away. Well, that is clearly multi-lobate phytolith. I, I wasn't zoomed all the way in yet, but... Uh-huh. He would be a little bit disappointed, though. can't identify with the mustache. I can, even with the mustache, I can tell what it is. Uh, if it had a full beard, I probably couldn't. 
Uh, any hardware questions come up? You're an SEM service tech? Oh, Neil. Uh, I haven't had any questions about that. Uh, I did have to service the instrument today, though. So, um, do you, are you a service tech for, uh, for Tescan Vegas? Can you tell us anything about the instrument that we could do to make the image even better? Not Tescan, okay. Which SCMs, J-E-O-L or, uh, is it like a Hitachi ones? <laughs> Just like that, Neil gets VIP steady. Oh, it is Hitachi, all right. Excellent. This is the same one from earlier, but it's okay. <laughs> we saw this one before, but not with the mustache. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the mustache is the fun part. You thought the Shrimp Lord had expired. You bought another baby one and the Shrimp Lord returned and ate the baby? Did it eat the baby? All right, Mary. Let's see this thing with the mustache on it. Okay. Do I need to take a picture of it or just let it load all the way? No, neither. Okay. You need to scroll to the top of that little window that says this seat one. sources. And there's a mustachioed, yeah, right there. And then wait, uh, this one. Click the unlock button, or is it unlocked already? Yeah, now you can move it. We'll put a little curly French mustache on it. Oh no! Can I rotate it? No, but um, you can rotate the diatom. Yes. <laughs> You're trying to put its eyes on the sides. Yes, like. I had the one the other day that looked so much like a smiley face and it made me really happy. Uh, it was smiling, so you started smiling? Yes. So let's just try to rotate it to like 100 and see what happens. That's close pretty, enough. pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah, I'm pretty good at guessing the, the number it should be. There you go. His other eyes over there somewhere, but yeah, he's got one eye kind of buried underneath a pile of junk. Yeah. Now he's got a he's got a French mustache. Are you gonna take a picture for us too? Or are you just sure. trying to fix the brightness? I didn't touch anything that time. <laughs> oh, that I heard the uh, SEM discharge actually. Okay, I was like, it that wasn't, wasn't me. You. That wasn't you. Mary's got that good focus going on. There we go. I uh, probably should change that to seven. It's funny because the mustache doesn't move, but the SEM image does. Um, Actually. Put a little French mustache on him, and then uh, that's how we know it's a, you know, Fancy diatom. Yeah. Perfect. There. You gotta straighten the mustache. That's critical. When you go to take the picture, it's gonna move everything. I know. It'll be okay though. I'm waiting for this to finish. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be close. I forget that it's like slightly off. Oh, don't tell me it's going to be blurry. <laughs> you kidding me? I didn't touch it. Mary, what are you doing over there? You re-blurried it? I didn't touch. I didn't touch either of those and I didn't touch the mouse. I don't know what it did. Oh, you can transform it? Ram3 says if you hit control E, it will let you transform it. For what? The mustache. The mustache? Yeah, you have to be on OBS. Control E. Oh yeah, I guess you could tilt it. 
you go under rotation, you could just, you can't spin it the way you want, but you can do that, yeah. It's for, it didn't rotate it very far. Well, I don't know how, I don't remember how far this was. <laughs> it's fine. I think it needs I Nid, we're putting mustaches on things. Nid. It's not a very sense. intuitive control. No. That's I okay. mean I could I could guess. Let's let's do Oh, you can see it while it's doing it. Being very, very picky about the mustache. That. Now it's perfect? No, it's up too high on this end, but it's okay. It's a little bit lost. Like, oh, I forgot the image moves. It's okay. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that it got out of focus. I don't know what I did at all. I don't think it's you. I think it's just discharged in the actual SCM. Okay. Didn't like your sample. Now its mustache has moved all the way down its face, I though. <laughs> just gotta it's keep this droopy <laughs> mustache. There we go. Now it's back to being happy for a bit. I'll just have to, like, slowly move it. <laughs> Manual mustache adjustments are required. <laughs> There's a trick you could also do, which is if you went to the SCM and scrolled out, it will show yeah. you the whole thing at once. But that's okay. We got it. All right. Now we can turn the mustache off. Yes. I'll I feel like that first. was worth it, though. That was. I think I'm on too. Do I not have? I thought I already took one. You haven't taken any pictures of Pleurocyra. I thought I took one earlier, but I guess I didn't. Okay. All right, mustache. Uh, if you hit the little lock button, then it won't get in your way. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Next time I do a moon stream, I'm going to put a mustache on the moon. Yes. And we'll just see how that looks. Right now, it wouldn't look so great because the moon is just a little sliver. So I feel like really the mustache would yesterday. be... It was really pretty. Unfortunately, it's set at like 8.30 or 9 o'clock, so it wasn't very dark out. It was and really pretty. I was at um, my almost brother-in-law's house. Um... <laughs> Almost. Um, Very technical. <laughs> yeah. But he had, he has really, like, they have a really pretty, like, area for sunsets. Like, just their view. And it looked really cool at the pink and purpley sunset. Ramsey says, if I have OBS, which I do, and I want to install Lyoran board, Lyoran board? Uh, he could set up channel point redemption to turn on the mustache for you, and then the users could move the mustache around. That sounds worth it. Yes. I'll just have to look it up, I guess. I get it installed. All right, well, I think I might switch to... We'll end up with the Mary with the mustache, though, so... <laughs> if we let users do it... <laughs> It's not a diatom, is it? No. Or if it is, it's not a good one. That's fair. Alright. Go ahead and go to six. I'm gonna go see if the other samples are dry. And then I'm going to run them in this sputter cooler. That's a diatom. That is. It's on the side, though. 
Do you know which one it is? Is it the Psychopalpa? No. Or is it... No, it's... Is it the same one from earlier? <laughs> um, Amphora? It's Amphora, yes. I just... That one's name in my head is just not one It's going to be one of those stay. ones. I'm just going to... Every time we run into an Amphora, that's the one I'm going to ask you to identify from now on. And then you'll get it. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> okay. You got this under control? I think so. I know you do. I have total faith. Here, I'll turn this so you can see what they're saying without having to flip around. I will be back. Um, Bluesy, I am not sure about that. Dr. Shell will probably know the answer, but I think that might have been what he was referring to earlier. Thank you, Trek Nerd. I just took a picture of it. Uh, it's not abandoning Mary. It's uh, leaving her to her own devices for a little bit. That's all. 
And yeah. you see, Hannah's learned what Amphora looks like now. That's good. I'm not very good with it. But. Amphoras were used to store wine, yes, or water, any liquid. And then you could pour out of either side of it, basically. And if you knew roughly, like, what amphora looked like... Look at that. It's another one. <laughs> it's another cyclic telemenigenina. It's another one that I don't want. If oh. you knew what the, uh, the diatom looked like, more or less, like, in, in totality, it kind of is like a two-mouthed jug, but not really. Is this a uh, Sorella? It is a Sorella. You could zoom in this, and get a nice clean something. image of the, uh, yeah, that part in there. This, yeah, sorry. It might be kind of interesting. I'm distracted by this diatom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I another diatom. Really like, ah. Mm. Zoom in real close. Mm. There you go. Now it looks pretty. This one is a Cirella. G S R I R E L A. And we're looking at it from the side. And I believe this is the one that you stuck in your talk. I believe that is Cirella yes. Labriel. It used to be Somatopleura. Yes. And when it was a Somatopleura, it used to be Somatopleura cilia. Yeah, because it's very confusing on Diatoms of America. That's the picture <laughs> for the genus. Yeah. And it's like, it's not in there anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Cirrilla cer is the, the little blue... Uh, emote for us uh, if you're it's really bright. if you look at the uh, the diatom emotes Cirella is the blue one um, for did I put one in here for the other let me see if I just go to the main channel have these BTTV ones, but I don't think any of those are Sororella. No. I have this really important that we have the cat jam one, I guess, for some reason. So people can cat jam easily. I guess if Mallory starts singing, we can put that up. There you go. Now oh, Mary's got us a coffee book table picture. Ooh. So the one that uh, Hannah put in the um, channel, that Cirella is from East Africa. Um, that's a really cool one that we found in Lake Tanganyika. I found it in Tanganyika. It's my picture, not Mary's. This one's Mary's, though. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, make samples. I'm going to do the job I made Mary do. Things start. If you heard him, but he said that we had uh, the samples ready, so Anna wouldn't be mad. Yeah. I can see she's still around, see. These are samples she collected when she was on her way to Yellowstone National Park. Ooh. And, uh, and we are looking for some very large 
in them that we will probably describe as new species. She said, still around but getting hungry. What's that? Anna, er, Anna said she's still around, but she's getting hungry. She's getting hungry? Yeah, that's what she says. Eat lunch. I mean, I feel like that's a good solution. I think it's a great solution. That's what I did. Get food and watch the stream. You can or, eat, eat and watch at the same time. Mm -hmm. What are all these little, like... Network of bumps on the surface? Yeah. Like, not, like, these little... You can't see because your head's where it goes. Like, these... Oh, uh, those little things are usually referred to as granules. Okay. They are, like, where exosilica gets stored. They don't serve a function. Anna said her stream source is near a microscope. Lunch is not. What's that? Anna said her stream source is near a microscope. Lunch is not. Oh. I'm gonna let you eat. Next to the microscope. That is an avicula. If you were gonna take a picture of it and put a name on it later. Okay. <laughs> you can tell. Fourth of lineations, right? Yes. <sighs> so, for people who are watching, these little stubs are what we've been looking at, so each time Ma uh, Mary switches the um, the sample that she's on, we switch to another one of these things, and they're basically just a couple of, um, they're like about a centimeter and a half wide or something, so they're not very big, and, uh, and the surface that she scans across is basically just the surface of this, and then you know, so she'll browse across it and then we'll move to a different one. And I'm attaching them to uh, these little stubs, which have a pin mount. And the pin mount basically goes into the SEM and holds, it, holds the stub. With a bit of carbon tape. I'm sorry, did you say this was Nitzia? Navicula. Navicula. Nope, they're kind of small. Yeah, it's probably Navicula. Navicula? Okay. Uh, that's pretty interesting looking edges, though. Yeah, the rate piece started sitting on a Ledge. It's like standing up on a ledge. 
Um, well, yesterday outside it was like 100 degrees, but in here it's only like 70. Mary's cold. It's, yeah, and I'm, I'm cold. It's... It's 90 degrees outside today, as of right now. You might have to get into the mood. What? It's 31 degrees Celsius. 31 degrees Celsius. Non-Americans, I got you. Yeah, 90 degrees Celsius would be pretty hot. <laughs> I don't think we'd be alive. We'd be in trouble if it was 90 degrees Celsius. So. It would. It would be great if we were trying to boil water, though. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I found another of the Cyclotella. You love those things. <laughs> They're just everywhere. We're going to do something real quick. Go to the bottom menu, the start menu, and click on Droid Cam. It's in the menu choices under D. You have to scroll. This? Yep. And then the client. This one? Yep. And. 181 one yep uh, yeah I just hit start whoa that's confusing um, and then go down to the OBS and just click on full droid where it's in the scenes this, on the this. left yep there you go oh that, <laughs> that's weird now um, I'm just going to do a quick little tour while Mary's working on the SEM so you can see uh, that's the, uh, the screen she's using. This is the little panel that she uses. The top button is for magnification, or the wheel and the bottom wheel is for focus. And then she's just using a mouse for the other control. And then this is the actual SEM. So it's probably as tall as Mary is. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. But the, uh, uh, this is a drawer that opens where the samples go in and out. This is the uh, elemental analyzer, which we're not using right now. This is the secondary detector, which we are using right now. And then on this side, this is a little camera port that's looking in the, uh, is the image below you. Sorry for sticking my elbow in your face, Mary. Okay. The buzzing that you hear all the time, that's this thing back here. That's the actual pump, the vacuum pump. And uh, sometimes I prep samples using a little stereo microscope. And right now I'm going to just walk over and, oh, you found a different diatom. Do you know what kind that is? Is it Ampora? It's not Ampora. <laughs> I tried to tell you it was a different kind. Um, let me get It makes me, I want to say Cymbella, but That's I... because it is a Cymbella. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the other side of the lab where you won't be able to hear me very well. Um, and I'm going to turn on the sputter coater and I'm going to sputter coat some samples with gold. So uh, this is the, the sputter coater over here. And um, you'll still be hearing Mary talk, but uh, yes. you can relay what I'm saying maybe. I can do that. So this is our sweater coder. Samples are all loaded in here that we are looking at. So uh, this is a seven gallon carousel. So you 
saw the surface of those samples when we put them in. I'll just show you real quick. See, everything in there looks gold, but the samples are actually uh, aluminum coated. Um, hang on one second. So, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, what he said. Um, she asked what you said, but I don't know what, what part she asked. Oh, okay. The, uh, I was just trying to showcase that the samples are in there and they don't have a gold coat on them yet. Uh, and I might be able to steal this micro microphone enough that Mary doesn't totally have to relay everything I say. I if say, I do that. Chat, so I wasn't sure okay. what you guys asked. So I think you can hear me if I do it this way. Um, so that's the sputter coater, and we're going to turn the samples into gold coating on them so that when we put them in the SEM, uh, we're using silica, which is not conductive of electricity very well, uh, but gold is, and we want our samples to be conductive. So we need to make it. Uh, get to the point where we can sputter coat stuff. Um, just like the SEM, the top of the sputter coater has a little bell jar, and that bell jar is uh, has to happen in a vacuum. So uh, right now we're just pumping the air out of uh, the bell jar at the top, right? And then once all the air has been pumped out of it, uh, I'm going to turn on a little electrode, and we're going to get a uh, disco light show associated with the, um... What happened, Mary? Did you marry it again? I didn't touch it! Did you mess up the sample, Mary? What happened? I think something got bumped when you got most of the picture and then it got some sort of a distortion? Right, it was right now when we were doing the distortion. Could have been me, is that what you're trying to say? It could have been both of us. You're trying to blame me for this? A little bit. I see. It's not gonna, it was good. Okay, once it's completely pumped everything out from the chamber, uh, then I'm going to turn on the electricity and what will happen is uh, a little charge will go through the top of there. There's a gold target in there and it's going to turn the gold uh, into a small gold plasma cloud and it will basically electroplate the samples that are within there so that they'll have a gold coating on them and they'll come out. So they went in silver and they're going to come out with a gold surface like this. This is the way they should come out. If everything works correctly, which it should. So I just opened a little valve that lets some argon in basically to allow the um, chemical reaction that needs to happen to get the electro electroplate. Yeah, the goal is to make them conductive, and the reason for that is um, the electrons that we're hitting the surface with, we want those to basically uh, dissipate. We want them to, to roll off of the sample and then into the ground, the electrical ground, so that they don't just charge up on all the surfaces. Uh, if they do that, then the picture looks terrible. Yeah, it's a, it's something to do with the way the plasma cloud works. It has to have some argon in there. So we just use the argon that's in the air. It doesn't have a separate argon tank. It just uses a little bit of atmospheric argon, I think. Okay. So we're going to turn it on right now. You'll be able to see the plasma cloud. I'm going to turn the lights down so it's going to... You'll be able to see the actual plasma cloud coming down from the material. Look into the chamber. It's creating a purple. That's cool. 
So now it's actually the cloud of plasma, and all the surfaces that are inside are getting coated with gold. Um, and you can see the cloud doesn't come all the way down, it just comes down to the top part. And the rotation is just so that the samples get evenly coated, right? So there's nothing magical going on there. Uh, it looks like a little disco dance, but it's basically just so that the samples are evenly coated with gold. And usually let it run like this for a minute and a half, and I haven't been timing it, because my phone is being used as the source for the camera. So I'm just going to guesstimate. Mary, you can tell me if it's been a minute uh, from when we start right now. So you can see this is the whole sputter coating process but ultimately gives us the gold coated samples when we're done. Ten seconds? Okay. We can turn this back to Mary. And um, there are some questions. Okay. Slash comments, but you can I don't actually know. go to the scene and turn the main camera back on, so it's off of my phone. This one. Yeah. That's there it. you go. It's been a minute. Uh -huh. Are you going to be sitting back down? Okay. Are you going to be sitting back down over here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gonna move it back. Right there. I can handle those. Okay. <laughs> this is what happens to your brain when you play StarCraft 2. Uh, sometimes when I play StarCraft 2, uh, a similar thing happens. <laughs> it's Twitch colored. Here you go. So you get a little bit of behind the scenes. Um, yeah, that's why it's used. Yeah, it's good for bombarding the gold target, exactly. Thank you. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> if we were talking about manure, you'd have the same degree. Well, that's good. Uh... <laughs> it's alright. Talk, it'll be fine. Yeah, 1.5 minutes is about what I usually use, but if it gets a little extra gold, it's not a big deal. Uh, plasma gets generated inside it. Okay. Uh, so, we're back to normal mode. Except for my head's cut off, of course. Um, and I'm going to get the sample and load them into uh, just a little put them back in a little dish so that we can put them onto this, this stub that we have here. Um, is that Melisire? Or is that just combo else? Chunk of debris. Okay. They really throw me off when they're like... Geometric shapes? Yeah. Yeah. Treasury. To junk in it, but That one has its own mustache, yes. It is a mustache. 
There are diatoms that look more like mustaches than other diatoms. There's a bunch of junk in it, but... Yeah, that's got some trash in it. It's mostly clay. Yeah. There's probably not a way to tell which one it is, is it? Is there? So I didn't show these, but here's the surface of those. I don't know if you can see them very clearly. Uh, but that's definitely gold coated now. Thanks for hanging out, Hannah. Catch you probably whenever you're on next. There's junk in the trunk, yes. Well, it's not really in the trunk, it's just inside of it. But... Is this another amphora? Yes. Ooh, starting to get it. Starting to get it. the samples or just how I was putting stuff on the stubs, but it seems like the ones near the bottom tend to have more diatoms. I think it's actually the samples. Okay. That's an observation that I made um, that's on that poster. Okay. I just looked at a few samples, but it seemed like the ones at the bottom, there was a higher concentration of diatoms. I think that's junk. Yeah, I think it is junk. That's something to look forward to for your actual analyses to see if you can quantify that for us somewhat. Okay. Because, like, even on the SCM, like, it's easier, it's been easier to find things yeah. towards the bottom of the core. Hey, Table Sick Maniac, hello. We're, uh, we're doing a long stream. What did you find us? Um, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's an inside view of something. Agree. But. Also, I think it might be at the last Syrah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Our choices are the last Syrah or Stephanodiscus, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it's Thanks. the last Syrah. Uh, yeah. Mm. It's a really interesting. What's yeah, it looks like that? a little bit of the internal surface has been broken off. Okay. Um, do you think I would be able to get this in better focus? Zoom in on just the little cracked portion or on like the this? surfaces of the strutted processes and then try to image around those. I would just zoom out to the whole screen at this point. Double click. Ah, uh, no. Nope, not on the middle button. Now you moved us. I did. <laughs> Double click to get out of this, though. It's, it's, it's right still there. there. I'm just going to zoom, like, way in. Yeah. That's a good port. That's, that's sort of a good part right in there to zo just to zoom the whole screen into it even. This part? Yeah, because you can look at the that surface and also the um, started process if you want. Yeah, exactly. 
that's it. You're in focus. I would just zoom out at this point. You hear that noise? Yeah. So that was the SCM's discharging. So I'm gonna have to focus it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like the second or third time it's done that today. Yeah. Okay. I think it's probably something to do with the um, the new filament. Okay. You got it. Good plan. Uh, RSCM has choices from one kilovolt to 30 kilovolts for the accelerating voltage. Yes. Why does it look like it's not in focus? It's a great question. Like that looks in focus. That's not what I focused on. <laughs> well, you can break it. It does look like that's what it did. What? Okay. Um. Here. Just. It'll be okay. Just get that in focus. Okay. See if it'll do it. It's a little less than the electro guns in an old analog TV. I think it's fine. Are we done after this one? Yeah. Okay. I didn't get to seven, but it's okay. They went from 10 kV to 400 kV. Wow. It's like an order of magnitude more than what we have here. Pink dye time. Oh, in the in the slideshow. Playing with fire when you move that mouse, Mary. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know if I hit like the mouse wheel or what earlier. Could be. Could have just did it discharged again. Yeah. At this point, I mean, I don't know. Sir, so all the 
those? Those are all, yes, bow face photo portrait okay. or central photo portrait if you like. And then the ones on the edge, are those the Rima portrait? No, those are mantle mm -hmm. photo portrait. So it's the same so same thing, it's just on the side, so we call it mantle. Okay. Basically the same processes. We've got satellite pores around the outside edge and a central hole. The Rima portrait looks like a little mouth. That's what was up there? Yep, in the top corner, yep. Well, that picture worked out okay. It did. T H A L A S S I O S I R A. Okay. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I tried to spell it how the one that we misspelled earlier. So then. So we have six and seven still. Yes. I've okay. been looking at six. Okay. Do we want to look at the Idaho stuff or do we want to go to seven? Or well, let's get the Idaho stuff in, and okay. then on, let's see, you won't be here Wednesday, right? No. Thursday? Yes. Thursday, we can just do some where you can spend okay. time looking at the rest of these, and this, okay. these two. And we probably won't stream that, so you can just go ahead and spend all day in here, tinkering okay. around with it. So, home? Yes, Where's... home. Now we're home, so we need to turn off the voltage. Is it that one? Or yeah, no? that's yeah. it. And then vent. Yes. Yeah. So now we're just pumping some air into the chamber, so the vacuum pressure is decreasing. And once the vacuum pressure gets to room, temp room pressure, we'll be able to actually open the chamber and then we'll put some samples in. So we need to switch out the samples that are in there with the ones that I just made, which are these ones. So then, this is good to open. Yep. You need your little screwdriver. You can take them off of that and put them onto this one. So just put it on that base and close the drawer. Yeah, so we're keeping the air out as much as possible. So there's little set screws that hold in each one of the stubs on our little carousel here. And Mary is just loosening the set screws. And then we'll be able to take them out. I'm just storing them temporarily in this little container so that we know which one she's already looked at. And for seven and for six, if you want, you can put those in that other tray so that they're Right, on the target for Thursday. Because we didn't, we only had 12, so the last two didn't get an inch in the sputter coated. Mm -hmm.
Are they going to be good to leave out until Thursday? Probably best if we put them in the dry cabinet. How long does it take? Uh, for us, maybe a minute, a minute and a half to pump down. Does it need more? No, no, it's fine. Okay. All right. And I'm going to change our little stream title. to diatoms from the stream in Idaho. And I'm gonna take over control if that's all right. You can take a break. Um, you can still hang out if you want, it's up to you. You can help me with the chat, switch roles. Can you see if I plug this in to get the pictures off? No. Okay. Yeah, they can't see. Not that I care, but... This part, you mean? Yeah. You want uh, all of your photos? Uh, just the ones from today. The ones... It would be named under new... The new folder, because I didn't get it named in time. <laughs> It's these ones? Yes. In new folder? Yeah, and then the two that are outside of it are supposed to go in there too. And then it can just go out. anywhere? Yeah. It'll be new folder out here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at this. Uh, it's Pacific Plankton. Is look your class up. over now, Pacific? back amongst us. Um, there's an external pump which takes it down most of the way and then a um, turbo pump. So it's almost there. We're, we're about to switch right now. Yeah, so it just switched over so we can actually access the high voltage beam. So it doesn't take long. All right, that's in there. You want that out? Yes, please. Here you go. Uh, yeah, it doesn't take long see, at all. Like, three of them. Yeah, there's some big diatoms on here. So these ones are Ellerbeckia, these really big ones. Or they may be Pleurocyra. Actually, that Pleurocyra that you have is here as well. Okay. And um, so some of these really big ones could be Pleurocyra. This is the way they look when the whole valve is together. And there's a lot of diatoms on that compared <laughs> to all of the silt on mine. <laughs> yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like, Mary. Um, that's what mine look like. So, and this is a giant cymbella. And the one that we're looking, the type that we're looking for are actually gonfanema and gonfanese. That's like another other These are roicosphenia, which are kind of close. There's another Ellerbeckia chain. There's a whole chain of them. That's cool. So if we look here, you'll see the surfaces have sort of wicked looking spines on them. Those are definitely Ellerbeckia. Ned for science said um, he put a turbo, or said I put a turbo pump on mine too, but it takes an hour from atmosphere to Whoa. 10 to the negative five tour. Uh, yeah, that's unbearable. That's a long time. Uh, so this is a whole big chain of Ellerbeckia. That's cool. And if we zoom in, you can actually see here they have these really intricate connections between them. 
You see these in here? Uh, so those are the, the faces that we were looking at that have sort of like a poker chip face, and then they have these sort of really weird, intricate uh, other faces. So I have a question. Okay. The, like, when you're looking at it, the actual, like, both valves, which part is that, like, in the chain? Oh, how do we see one whole valve? So yeah, like you? which, what is one whole valve in that chain? So that's a valve face, mm -hmm. and let's see, it's hard for me to tell what the, these girdle bands are here, um, but I think this is also a valve face. Okay. So they're kind of short okay. height valves and, and cylinders. Yeah, I think that's a whole diatom, and there's another whole diatom, and there's another whole diatom, and another one. There's a lot so of them. So what's, like, that and that? Is These that are girdle the bands. bands. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's girdle bands wrapped around. There's a lot of them. That's a whole big chain of them. So. I don't know what... Yeah. yeah. It's definitely Ellerbeckia. And then this... Is what they look like on the valve face. Okay. So. This is so much easier to see diatoms. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't look at samples that come from a river, it, you know these were collected live. Yeah. So that's one difference is that what we're looking at was collected from plants. Um, you know, so like we took these off of living materials, and. Um, So everything that's on here was alive like a month ago, right? Yeah. So that's one thing. And the other is, you know, it's like plants and diatoms and that <laughs> yeah. was it, right? So no debris or other junk on the slides. So you can see almost everything in our field of view is either an Ellerbeckia or these Cockanese are everywhere. So like every one of these little oval shaped guys is a Cockanese. And see, they still got some sort of clay on them, which is actually obscuring the view. And my guess is that Mallory didn't rinse them to get the clays off. Because she took me literally at, like, we need to make stubs for these. So that may be something that we were going to have to run into as a problem, because if all the surfaces are covered with clay, we won't be able to see a bunch of things. Right, so this ones are these ones are clear, but there's some parts of them that are basically covered with like organic coatings or clay or something, and they need to be rinsed for the actual SEM. You're not able to rinse silt size particles out, are you? No, uh, well, I mean, we're not rinsing them in the sense that we're sh we shake up the whole sample and then we let it settle yeah. and then we just take out after like ten minutes, like we did with yours. It mm -hmm. gets rid of the clay size particles. Um, but we're mostly looking for really large things, like this thing. See, this would have been great if we didn't have it under a bunch of clay. See how it's like a blanket of stuff over top of it? Like all these, you can barely see anything. It's because there's a bunch of clay over yeah. like draped over top of it. So, like, this is the diatom we wanted. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and we got clay instead. So why are we looking at this specific diatom again? I don't remember. You've so, today or not. Uh, this, these large gomphonema that are in here, or gomphonese and gomphonema that are in here, are new species. Gotcha. So we sort of bumbled across them, but they need to be rinsed for clays. And I'm going to guess that we won't be able to see anything from these, which is a good, it's good that we checked, because uh, I, uh, at the very least, want to be able to have clean samples for, for Wednesday. Um, but they, these all have clay all over them, so. When, whenever they prepped the samples originally, they actually rinsed them pretty quickly after they um, rinsed them. So they just were rinsing and rinsing pretty quickly yeah. with like maybe 15 minutes between preps. Um, 
So there may be some of it that's actually got no clay on it. Like some of these longer, bigger pieces in here might actually be free from clay. So that? it's a good question. I don't know the answer. Uh, maybe an ulnarium. It's in girl view and also has clay on it. So seven's not so great with the clay. We'll look around. Maybe some of the other stubs are okay. So the diatom that we're looking for is about 100 microns. It looks sort of like this in girdle view when it's not covered with clay particles. Um, and this one's actually broken up into chunks. What we really want to see is an internal view, and I'm worried that because everything is covered with clay, that our internal views are going to just look like clay. Yeah. So it's not going to work out. Probably. because these all also look like they're covered with clay. So There may be some areas of the slide that are clean, but most of it's gonna have like junk on the surface. Like, see, so you can't see even see any of the pores. That's a cockanese, but you can't see anything. Yeah. So. We'll make a note. See, this is what it's going to look like when you see the inside of a diatom. It's just going to be like the shape and, and clay. <laughs> Not super helpful. But we'll give it a shot. And then if it doesn't work out so hot, I guess I can go yell at Mallory. It's that same diatom we just saw. It's a girdle view of some fragilaria or ulnaria. We're also super far zoomed out still, so there's one of the ones that we want. You can, you can see the structure. See it. You can see it. Does it have a diatom at the end of it too? <laughs> yeah, it's got a little sitter. Sitter. Just sitting on the tail end of it here. I think it's cockanese. So, in an ideal world, we'd be able to see all of the little pores down here in the apical pore field. like so. So you can see uh, that's the apical pore field. These are the stri, the areoli that make up the stri. I don't know why it's all cracked like that.
but we do have a nice clean shot of it, aside from the fact that it's got clay. And... Anna asked what we did with that poor diatom. I don't know. Who knows? Then this one has seen did some things. Pacific said it was crunched. Yeah. It's, it's got a bunch of crunch marks on it. I think maybe it's just an old one that was laying around in the material for a long time. It wasn't me. Uh, it's probably because I let Rihanna touch it. <laughs> Potentially. That's what she gets for not watching the stream. Yeah. Although they're working with Dr. Yes today, aren't they? Yes. His problem for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we at least have the diatoms present here. This one's kind of beaten up. But you can get a sense of the scale. They're around 100 microns. Let's see if we can find another. Or maybe an internal view and just get lucky and not have any clay on it. But I think we're going to run into this everywhere. Mallory came back from vacation and forgot we needed to prep them for the SCM differently. So also, you know what this means, uh, because we did find some in these samples, it means I'm required to make cookies for Anna. So you should start thinking about what kind of cookies you want, Anna. I haven't forgotten. We'll pay the cookie tithe. She said hee hee. <laughs> A ginger snaps question mark? Oh, I can make ginger snaps, I bet. And then Pacific asked, did Mallory bring her goop back? She brought stuff back. Um, I think she wants to try to do that for the stream on next mm -hmm. Monday. Because I told her that Wednesday we were going to look at some more of these things. Uh, and I thought we would actually have samples that would be good. I think these are Melosyra, which also occur in these samples. This might be a, a good time to set these aside and use them for the micro manipulator and see if we could crack open some of the ones because if they had clay on the outside, they'll be clean on the inside. Yeah. So. We could at least try to see if we could get the internal view that we need from those that way. And a lot of times they end up being in girdle view, uh, like these ones. That's not the right species, I don't think. I think that's just a Rikosphenia. But um, they end up being in girdle view because they're like pie wedge shaped, sort of. You can see another one here. Oh, that's probably not Rikosphenia. Maybe that's that other Gonfanema. But, um, so they end up kind of laying on their side. But we should be able to pick through them and get some of them out. And then I can also process some of the plant material. So for these, we just dumped some of the water that the plants were in into the sample vials. I'm 
sure what that is. Oh, it's a navicula. It's also fractured. Too small. As you can see, every every one of those cockneys just has clay all over it. You can get a good shot of the sort of like hexagonal shaped components, the girdle band. That's Alabecchia again. Little Melosyra. These are Roycosphenia. These are all Cuckanese. So, all of those in that group are typical, like, rheophilic or aerophilic species. Except for Cuckanese, this looks on plants and other diatoms. Sure. 46 are cool looking tubes. Well, they look like cool tubes, except for they should have more detail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we'll need to work on it. Those are spines all over it. Yep, yeah. yep, those are spines, the little tiny spines. I think this is a Melosyra. They have these weird angular, like, star-shaped spines almost on them. Mm -hmm. This one's super, super clean, too. It's like weird where, what areas get the, uh, the clay and what don't. Anna said this one's cute. Yeah, it's a cutie. I zoomed in and lost it. It's got a uh, nice on it too. I'll fix it. There's a little cockney stuck on the side of it. Yeah. You can actually see the girdle bands really well. Right in there. Class over for the day, Pacific. What'd you guys yes. learn about? Anna had a question. Who did? She, Anna, she said, do you think the um, coconese or coconese could have been growing on it? I do. It's in life position. It's, uh, it's laying Rafi down, which is where you'd expect it. And also, um, it's on the part of the diatom where we usually see them growing when they're really big, which is basically on the girdle bands. And also, there's another one down here. 
right? So I think that it's probably in light -like position. That's the way they grow. Um, and that's something that we've seen um, on Pacific uh, streams when we put on some of the Pacific stuff. We saw, see cockneys growing on Ismia. And um, any of the really large diatoms, they usually have some cockneys growing on them like this. Uh, Pacific said today was sex in the morning in Monterey diatoms in the afternoon. <laughs> and then. Uh, sex in the morning? Anna said the diatom, diatom on top of diatom on top of diatom. Yeah. And then Chink 46 said diatom was on it. Like a lasagna. A Melisira Cockanese lasagna. She said Mark gave a sex talk. I saw that earlier that you said that. He was only talking about centric sex, right? Or did he talk about non centric sex? I think that looks good enough to take a picture from. He covered it all. Oh. Oh. All the sexy. Mind of a snail sim symbios sim symbiosis? Um, I don't think that they're symbiotic. Uh, it's just one living on top of the other, so it's more just like an epiphyte. Um, I guess in a way it's a symbiosis, but it's probably commensalism, if anything. <laughs> it's prime real estate, yeah. That's pretty much the best way to think about it. Also, how are you doing, Mind of a Snail? Have you recovered from your stream last night? Oh, resting cells and spores too. Cool. He showed them diatom sperm is what she All right. <laughs> Never recovered. <laughs> it was a fun one. Uh, I can't believe when I told people they should clap that there was all that clapping that happened afterwards. I feel like I was directing things. <laughs> I told them they needed a clap like Tinkerbell and it would bring the stream back to life. Did it work? Uh, well, they have a command in theirs where they type like a, a symbol for clap mm -hmm. and then uh, it makes a clapping sound. Everybody started typing it. And then it happened so much that their computer basically couldn't handle the all the clapping. But the stream did come back. So it was a fun one. <laughs> the power of collective popcorn, exactly. We have interactions here, but it's mostly just sticking mustaches on things. We got the mustaches and that's it. This is all one melosira, isn't it? Yeah, that's a one valve. Uh, one diatom, sorry, both valves. And These are the girdle the bands. bands. You can see okay. the joint where they join together right here. Okay. And then they overlap. And this is the outermost girdle band right here. And then this is the, um, the epitheca or the uh, epi valve, the top one, the bigger one. Um, I think Mind of a Snail, is this Mind of a Snail and Redeem statue? Oh, she did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then Bluesy said, I feel you should add a beard. Uh, I'll work on other options. Let's see, if I zoom out like this, I think that's what they see, right? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. You could use the two coconut sticks as eyes. You want me to rotate it sideways? You could. Uh, can I though? I'm not sure you I can. You could rotate the mustache sideways. Oh, have the whole thing sideways? That we could do. Well, we know how to do that. Here's our mustache. Oops. Our st <laughs> I kind of like it with just one, one eye. <laughs> just like that. Yes. And a little, you've got a little cockiness on his chin, you know? We'll put yeah. that right there. It's still tilted from earlier. I like it tilted. It's yes. great. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> Spent all your channel points on this. <laughs> yeah, now it's got a monocle. It's like the uh, the other diatom. Yes. It's like well, this one right here. It's very. It's it's very. Uh, I think he looks dapper. I think so too. I think that's a good look. Yes. I do. Mary, you're in charge. Okay. It's a good thing I've got a backup. What's going on? Stop bleaching. Yes. Yes, it does. Um, I think he's, he already saved it. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess the mustache is on here still. Could hide it.
happening, Mary? Just kind of moving around the site, seeing if there's anything interesting. Is everything still covered with clay everywhere? Yeah. Pretty much. The little ones that are curved are Roycosphenia. They look like Gonfanema on their side, but they actually mm -hmm. are sort of curved. So we're looking for those giant Gonfanemas. Have you found any of those? I thought I saw one, but you said they were like 100. It should be answer. like at least 60. It was smaller than 50, so. Um, you can feel free to rotate through. It's just going to go to four. See if we can find any. Is that one? Potentially? Or no? Uh, I would zoom Is in and take a look. I don't think so. What's the cockanese that's next to it? So they should be way bigger than the cockanese. Unless it's a very big cockanese. There's another Melisira with another cockanese growing on it. Do we want to look at that one? Or we want to try to find the other guy? Guys. You're free to just browse around however you like. There's a big long chain of Ellerbeckia. That's pretty cool. I'm kind of surprised there's not Cockanese growing on the sides of those as well. Now I have a mental image of Cockanese the size of a cat. <laughs> uh, I mean, that would be pretty cool if they were that big. Yeah. Any diatom the size of a cat would be a fun diatom, in my opinion. I would have to agree with that. I wonder if diatoms have an upper size threshold that's like a structural issue. They can't get bigger than this size. I feel like they would almost have to, wouldn't they? I don't know. It's a good question. It's a good philosophical question. Somebody could test it with AutoCAD probably if they could get materials that were similar. would help us figure that out. Is it a clay-covered Cymbella? I think so. Ew, ew. Yep, it's just you're looking through the clay. I'm gonna go ask Mary, not Mary, Mallory, if she uh, rinsed any of those samples before she started. And if she did, tell her that we need to rinse them several more times because they still had a bunch of clay in them. Yeah, I think that's the ulnaria. Mm -hmm. Or fragilaria or something. It's still hard to tell. Entertain them with your jokes, Mary. <laughs> um.
wish you all the best. Um, Mario, I don't want to break the SCM. It's like $60,000 and I don't have that kind of money. Um, I wish, but <laughs> um, a lot of them on a, I kind of, I know, I saw what you were talking about, um, it was covered in clay, so I figured it probably wasn't worth, worth looking at, but I can try and go back to it if you want me to, um, I saw one, but it was kind of covered in clay, and then Anna was a little bit sad that I didn't take a picture of it, but I don't remember exactly where it was at. Was it on the stove? Yes. It was, it's like over in this area, so. <laughs> Why didn't you take its picture? It was covered in clay, so I just didn't, but... Mary only likes the highest quality photos. <laughs> and Sorry. if something's got clay, <laughs> she doesn't care. She's not going to image a janky diatom. <laughs> Pretty sure it was, like, I think she's talking about the one that I saw that was in Girdleville. Pretty sure. There's a whole bunch in large diatoms in girdle view. I'm going the wrong way. I was down here more. Oh, she said it was some in valve view. Oh, yes. I wonder if I zoomed all the way out. I think she's that talking it? about this one. Yeah. This one? <laughs> <laughs> is this the one you were talking about? Cause I that's in Valve View. Yes. I'm pretty sure this is the one she was talking about. Because I went to zoom into it and it just looked like it was covered in clay. So I will. Mario says, I am prepared for our diatom overlords. And uh, Dr. Spock says, diatoms are self-conscious about their clay. So So are we taking a picture of this? <laughs> Does she want a picture of it? Can you zoom in I on the reefy area and see if we can part? see? That's not the reefy. That's not the reefy. That's the this edge. They should have a briefie that runs through the middle. This whole part right yeah. here? Yeah. You're on it. I'm with you. That's got a lot of clay on it. It's a reefy end. It's just just south of where you have yes. that. So if you drag it, the box, the other button, there you go. Yeah, that's just covered in clay. I'm with Mary. I wouldn't have taken the picture either. Yeah. Well, you can kind of see the... You can kind of see it right there. Some of the pores, but still not great. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's into pottery. Uh, she says it's a nice looking diatom. 
Uh, right now I'm counting a sample full of Didymo and clay covered diatom is still prettier than what I'm getting in that sample. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, Didymo in the SCM looks pretty good. Probably not in the... Uh... That's the wrong button. That's the wrong way. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you got a good sense of how big you should be looking for. Yeah. Right there. That is a monster-sized Rikosphenia. If that's Rikosphenia, I would zoom in on that one. Or is that the girdle-viewed one that you were looking at? Um, there was a couple of different ones that I zoomed in on. I think that's probably Gonfanema or Gonfanese. Not Rikosphenia. There's clay all over it. Yeah, that's clay. We're making up the words. Uh, all words are made up, Dr. Spock. All of them. Yeah. There's no such thing as a non-made up word. And science words especially are made up. We have to make them up. That's how... Um, that's, that's how words work. You're way off into the clay up here. I know. I'm just gonna... I'd say just rotate to six or five, I mean, and then... All right. Maybe we'll get lucky and there'll be one out in the middle. It doesn't have a lot of clay in it. What's the really There's long skinny guy that's there? Or fragilaria, but not in girdle view, finally. Oh, clay all over it. Well, it's an ulnaria. Yeah. Can you zoom in on those? I'm sort of curious what's going on there. Still not sure what's going on there. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. There's just sort of weird bumps, but it's an ulnary. That's not one of the companies. Zoom in on it, let's see. It's a bunch of clay over a diatom of some kind. I think that's all this is. When I uh, asked Mallory if she had rinsed the samples to get the clay out. She said, that wasn't in the directions. <laughs> As if she'd never made an SEM stub for me before. Um, is that potentially one? I don't know. It's a little small. I think it's probably a uh, navicula. Also just clay all around it. Do I think they were dead before they were collected or they got dirty in the process of getting to me? I think probably there's a lot of organic matter in them and the organic matter decomposes into little pieces. Oh, right there, yeah, what's that? And so the clay is probably organic material that's draped over the surfaces of everything. So just organic, clay-sized organic material. Hey, that one's cleanish. Ish. It's still clay on it, but you can see the clean. reefy, and you can see the yeah. stry and the stigma. Do we want to rotate it a little bit? Yeah. We'll be like, yeah. Look at you. No one's got to tell Mary how to do the degrees. <laughs> I'd give it another 10, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah. We did boil them in nitric. And you'd think that that would get rid of all the organic material, but there's probably still some clay-sized particles in there that are plastic. And my guess is that that's what's covering it, is, you know, the organic that's material. It's not bad. It's not terrible. I mean, it's better than being completely clay covered. Yeah. Touch Do it. it. Okay. Um, trade auto brightening or? Yes. Okay. Probably should set the speed first, though. Yeah. Probably should. <laughs> You're supposed to go, yeah. you're supposed to go, that wasn't in the instructions. <laughs> yeah, there's probably just some actual clay mixed in with the organic clays. And so, um, my guess is that that's, you think of all the, like, slimy stuff that's coated over the, um, the macrophytes, and all of that's going to act to trap plastic clay. Get a very small brush and clean the diatoms. I've got undergrads, and I can put them on this. No, thanks. <laughs> I feel like that might be Rihanna's job. But. Yeah, Rihanna. Clean the diatoms. <laughs> this time use a tiny brush. We do have a micro manipulator and we can crack these open and look on the insides of them and that's our plan. So if we can't get any that are just naturally broken open. Um, for, for Dr. Spock, uh, how does an electron microscope work that it makes it better than a standard microscope? It doesn't use light, it uses electrons for start. So light waves have ranges from 400 to 700 nanometers plus or minus. So like some people's eyes can see a little bit wider range. And um, but the uh, electrons have very, very small wavelengths compared to light particle or light um, wavelengths. And the limitation for resolution is based on the wavelength. So the maximum resolution you can get out of a typical light microscope, I mean, you can get magnifications up to about 1,000 or sometimes 2,500 if they put different objectives on the eyepieces. But the, um, but the actual like limit for light actually ends around 630. Um, times magnification and then everything after that is actually s sort of just making it bigger not really making it better resolved and that's because the light wavelength limitation basically creates an issue for us um, and so when you change to electrons what happens is you've made the wavelength very 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 small and that actually allows us to get much more clear resolution out of our material as a result. Yeah, they're not extremely presentable today, Anna, but I have Mallory making us some more. So, you know, the typical maximum resolution, as I mentioned in a light microscope, it's usually around a thousand times, but um, but really the last 400 or 370 is just making it bigger, not making it better. And our maximum magnification with clear resolution in this instrument is usually like, um, like 180, 190,000 times. What do you want this named? Uh, that's fine, Gumpanese is fine. Uh, just uh, put a number after it for the date, 614. It can be all one without a dash or anything, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> it kind of looks eyes in the mouth. Do you want to put a mustache on it? Is I do. I kind of want to put Slap a mustache. Slap a mustache on it. Here. Put a mustache on that thing. 
Let's see what it looks like with the mustache. Just the mouse wheel to zoom out. There we okay, go. There you go. Let's see what it looks like with the mustache. We forgot to take the mustache off earlier. Oh. Gotta unlock it. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like. It's gonna take forever if you do it that way. Let's do 15. Mm -hmm. Can it be close to 45? Because we're trying to make it a 45 degree angle. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um... You trying to resize it? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put a mustache on anything. We don't care. Uh... It's looking pretty good. I also feel like the little dot could also be a nose and the mustache yes. could go on the other side of it. I feel like that's a that's also a possibility right there. There we go. That's like a hidden mouth mustache. <laughs> Let's publish it that way. <laughs> this yes. one we're gonna call Gonfanese Mustachio. <laughs> Mary, you like it? I like it. Uh, you like a, a guy with a mustache? What if they're a diatom? You like a diatom with yeah. a mustache? Diatoms Guys, fun. you're not so sure about that. <laughs> I mean, diatom, definitely with last year with a mustache. You have to have... <laughs> it's the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have one of my friends... Um, Grew out his mustache over quarantine, and it, it it did not suit him well. Did he do the French curl? Yeah. It, it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. I have the mustache integrated into the beard. See, so the, that's my look. Yeah, like mustache into the beard. Like I, I just feel like that's just like beard. I don't. That's the way the like beard's just supposed the to be. Yeah, just there the are people who grow the uh, the the you know, the beard and then shave the mustache part off. How do you feel about that? Um, <laughs> Gavin's brother did that, yeah. You made fun of him. Yeah, it doesn't look so <laughs> bad now. <laughs> but when he first did it, it just did not look right. What about, uh, what about just, like, pork chops? How do you feel about pork chops? Like, just this part? Just this, or... just this part, yeah. The sideburn pork know. chop look. Chin strap? The chin strap mustache uh, or no. beard? That's just not a good look. Mary doesn't like any of your weird looking beards. She wants a full beard <laughs> with a mustache. Like it's the way God intended it. <laughs> okay. How, but our diatoms with a French mustache yeah. are all right with. He looks good with. Hi, also, Sarah. I have met a guy with a really, really nice handlebar mustache. But like the thing was, I'm kidding you. Not, it's like out to here. Like proportionally to his face, it was like near his cheekbones. I, I want to tell this story. I wish I could find a picture of this guy. We went out in the field one time. You can you can do whatever. Now. Okay. Um, we went out in the field one time with this. Uh, we went to Yellowstone, and there was a guy there that was studying butterflies. And not relevant, of course, but yeah. um, we were all stationed together in one of the ranger stations. We were out doing field work as well. And um, he had the most ornate beard. It had like things curled up with little like things sticking out the beard and the mustache everything had little like appendages like antennas coming off of it and they were flattened like i mean he i don't know how much time you must spend like fixing up his his face and i mean we're in the field i'm doing field work you know what i mean like yeah. i barely got time to change my clothes and this guy's got like this <laughs> crazy mustache going on with like stuff all over the place right and uh you know i had to eat breakfast across from this guy and i'm just thinking how early did he get up to work on his his mustache so that he could have this crazy thing and go out in the field that way do both ends have the apical pore field no those just... are stray okay you can see the rafe kind of splits right down the middle of those yeah just barely okay who, who has time for that? 
You can go look at the other end. We should also get an overview picture of that one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who has time to get up and do that to their face? There. That's the way apical pore fields look. See, they're nice and distinctly different from the yeah. band of stuff above it. Mm. Not the most beautiful one I've ever seen. Yeah, the apical pore field can be split like that, but not on... It shouldn't still be in rows. Mm. How long did it take you to put on your face that morning? Zero. Zero. I don't have time for my face in the field. If I look bad, the people that I'm with, they're just going to have to deal with the fact that I got a shower at least. I don't smell bad. So, you know what I'm saying? Laura's out in the field right now. You think she gets up two hours early and starts working on her mustache? I don't think Probably so. Probably not. I don't I think still so. I don't think she has a mustache to worry about, so. You think she gets up and fixes her hair for two hours before she goes out and puts makeup on and stuff, though? I mean, that's what that's equivalent to. It'd be like showing up, like... That's fair. I'm out here trying to get, like, dishes <laughs> from the morning prepped, and, you know, she's curling her eyelashes to go in the field? No. <laughs> I don't think it's happening. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yes. Maybe he just had styled it enough that I didn't okay. it just like stayed like that. I don't. You I can't don't. sleep on something and have like <laughs> it had all these things coming off in every okay, direction. Okay. There's no way. You, I mean, you got to wrap that up or something. I don't know how you keep it like in shape. <laughs> Nobody does makeup for water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were correct. <laughs> I don't What'd even do. This is dietary <laughs> makeup. It's war. It's war. That's no right. one does makeup for it. You are That's very right. correct. I think the girls in the lab don't even put on their makeup to come in to do lab work, you know, during the I week. don't think any of us in lab wear makeup. I'm sure is that Rihanna? when you go out, maybe you wear makeup, right? Yeah. I never wear makeup. I mean, zero. Zero. Mary just always looks good. That's what she's trying to tell you. She doesn't need just, no makeup. I mean, I just don't have time in the morning before I go to work, and it's just, it's just not worth it. <laughs> One face all the time. <laughs> you keep your face on at night. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a special like diatom face painting we do. That would be great. That would be cool. We could all do it, though. It wouldn't just be for the ladies. <laughs> this is it's... getting weird. I'm off to my feeding station. All right. Uh, we'll probably be gone in an hour, unless we come across an open version of a Gonfanese. So we'll catch you later, Hana. Um, <laughs> your face should make you happy. Oh, yeah. We could do some sort of diatom-based exfoliation screen. Um, I do have, I think I got it from Dollar General, um, some sort of, <laughs> it was like deep sea clay mineral thing, so I, I probably had diatoms in it, but you it probably, probably wasn't did. just diatoms. We should get some deep sea clay mineral stuff in <laughs> and actually see, have, can you I bring some I, in? We'll yeah. put it on the microscope. It was like a very blue, blue color, <laughs> like very, very blue. Is that to make it more deep sea like? <laughs> I think so. Because I don't think there's any deep sea I don't stuff think that's so blue. Either. When it's in the deep ocean, uh, yeah. usually it's not going to have color. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, exactly. <laughs> you took the women, tucked their face off of the contraption that looks like scissors? Huh. <laughs> also. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, Mario. <laughs> As far as I know, my wife and daughter keep their face on all night long. Yeah. Carlin doesn't really wear makeup either, though. It's just not worth my time. You can just put a B after it. It's fine. I was trying to remember if it was 614 that we were still on. Did I? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sarah. We don't we don't grade for spelling around here, Sarah. It'll be fine.
We just judge mustache quality <laughs> and size and positioning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we went to a wedding. I didn't put any makeup on for the wedding, though. Uh, I did put a suit on. If you go to the Discord, for my Discord, there's a picture of me in a suit. Mary's never seen me in a, in a suit, either. I don't think so. No, definitely not. I've seen you somewhat dressed up, but that was more just like a, a jacket. And I yeah. don't think... Night, I don't think... I think it was just jeans. Yeah. <laughs> yes, without a t-shirt. Just in a in a full suit, actually. No hat. No uh, shorts or sandals. Full suit. This actually isn't that bad of a photo for being Good covered news, in clay. everyone. Thank you for the follow. I get dressed up occasionally. It was a wedding for a former student in my lab. She did her undergrad here and her master's here. And also, Mary's getting married soon. Yes. She didn't even send me an invite to the wedding, though. So she's not I haven't even mailed me. the invites out. She's not going to see me in a suit if she doesn't <laughs> send out the wedding invite to me. That's what I'm doing the rest of today after this. Sorry, Putting the... invitations together? Yes. That sounds like a lot of work. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of work. When my, uh, when my sister got married, she had 200 people. Mm -hmm. at her wedding. I don't know, is that what your target goal is, 200? It's, no. Smaller Less than, than that? It's smaller than that, but not invited people, I should say. There's going to be a bunch of uninvited people? No, just because they're invited doesn't mean they'll end up oh, showing I see, I see. up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, she had 200 people invited. That's 200, yes. not just 200 people. That's two, I had, she had like, I think it was like 200 invitations or whatever right so some of those are family invitations and yeah. some of them are individuals no i have like 70 of those and uh and she gave me a giant list and for her wedding i did all of the um envelopes i did mm -hmm. it with calligraphy so That's I, cool. I did all of her uh, addresses for the people that they went out to in calligraphy and then the inside of the envelopes i wrote something i don't remember what it is anymore mm -hmm. um for them Probably the names of the people or something. I, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, that made my hand hurt. <laughs> that was a lot of calligraphy. Yes. And uh, that's what I gave her as a wedding present. I just did all of her invitations for her. Yes. Um, Sarah, as far as the train wreck area, um, I'm just seeing a lot of the Cyclotella Minagina, and it's kind of annoying, <laughs> but it's, um... She's mad because the sample's all full of these it's eutrophied of diatoms, <laughs> indicating eutrophication, which is what we're actually looking yeah. at. Yeah. There's a lot... It's like every other diatom I find is the Cyclotella, and it's either that or there's just salt particles everywhere. But I am finding a lot of, um... I am finding a lot of diatoms that indicate higher nutrients, um, like stephanodiscus and um, cyclotella. And we also had some other preliminary conclusions, which is, you know, the top of the core, bottom of the core. Yeah. The, the abundance seems to be higher at the bottom of the core. Yes. So that's something that we observed. That's not how that's supposed to go. <laughs> 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 There's been a bit of a disaster right there. What is going on? It, it just broke off and then got stuffed in itself. Ow. Ow. See all those Ellerbeckia? They look nice and clean. They didn't have any clay over them. 
Is that one? It's a Cockneys. Used oh, to be there. I think there was another one. It fell off, and I think there's just oh. two of them. They were both attached. That's a good example of seeing how it actually is attached, right? Yeah. So it looks like it meant to be stuck there. It's got a little rim around where it was attached, probably from clay or organic material. I kind of want to take a picture of this because this is not how it's supposed to be. Do it. You're in charge, Mary. You got the helm. Um, I'll do. I'm going to... We've been running this stream for almost five hours. Yes. This is the longest SCM stream I think I've ever done. I think we had one where Mallory was on for four hours. Yeah. And I feel like you've already outdone her. Is it hard? No. I think it's actually pretty easy because we... The SCM is just like a giant time suck, right? Yeah. Like you start working in it and then it's just like, forget what you're doing. And then you're just like, I could just get a couple more. Yeah. And then... That's how it was last Thursday. And then I was like, it's 4.30. I haven't ate anything yet today. Should probably go eat something. <laughs> <laughs> you're starting to shake. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I guess I could go. Uh, sugar. Yes. Yeah, I want to take pictures of like pretty much everything I find, but it also takes a lot of time to take the pictures, so I know I can't, but. You don't have infinite time. Yes. You have a lot of time, though. I do. Most people schedule an SEM, they pay somewhere between $50 and $100 an hour to use it. Gosh. And then they put their samples on it and they try to get their pictures as fast as they can. Yeah. And then get off of it because um, when you're paying fifty to a hundred dollars an hour, that's a lot. That's a lot of money, and uh, that's why I don't have a lot of SEM photos from before I had an SEM. Yeah. Um, and you have to have access to it. Usually, they're really backed up. It's very difficult to get in to use them. Mm -hmm. And um, students being able to just like sit down and poke around and learn to control. The SEM, like, yes. forget that. That never happens. You know, if we were in a lab paying $100 an hour, I wouldn't have my students here yeah. just hanging out, giggling, and putting mustaches yeah. on things. <laughs> um, but uh, that's an advantage that we have. So, you know, it's nice. It's in my lab. And, uh, you mean not Dr. Spears' lab? <laughs> it's not Dr. Spears' lab, no. This is my lab. And... Uh, I think it's nice. It's a. Uh, it's nice to be able to share it with people too, and also, when I leave, then you guys can keep Mary company, so she doesn't yeah. have to be just sitting in here staring at stuff go by, putting mustaches on it by herself. Is that just one though? Yep, it's Cockneys. Okay. I didn't know. Like, did the top valve fall or the like aorifid valve fall off? Because that's the raphe right there, isn't it? Mm, I don't know. I'll zoom into it in a second. Sometimes the Avery fit valve has a sort of structure that makes it look like there's a rafe, but it's just it's, a crease. It's got the little like, oh, it has openings. Ends. Yeah. yeah. And that is the actual rafe inside. So that might be... It looks maybe like there was two valves or like it split. Um, what should I make this one? It's Ellerbeckia. I have no idea how E L L E R B E C K I A. Oh. <laughs> That's not right. It's a Monday, it's almost four thirty and I I almost went to um get coffee or something on lunch. I am so tired. Yep, that is the Rafi. That one might just be stuck on there. It doesn't look like it would sit at an angle where it would normally just be stuck like that. But It's not, like, too 
Like, this is just one valve, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. No, that's okay. one diatom plus a valve, I think. Okay. I think there used to be two whole diatoms, and then one, one of the outside valves fell off. Okay. That's what I think has happened. That's definitely the Rafe view. That's side. definitely the Rafe view. That's kind of cool. You could trade sleep for pictures, yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Except I also have a drive, so. Right. I can't drive tired. Mary's got to drive, and then she's got to get home, and she's got all the wedding planning to do. Yeah. She's got a bridezilla for at least two or three hours. I wouldn't necessarily call it that. No? No. Oh, that's one. Right there where your cursor is in Girdle View. Um, we were talking about this relatively recently. But that Carlin and I just had a surprise wedding for our wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, we just were having a goodbye party and then uh, and then we just like, okay, we're getting married now and nobody knew what was going on except for her parents. And I'm gonna wonder like how long into the marriage preparation before you start to think that sounds like a better idea <laughs> than what you have going on. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much just covered in clay, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Go down and look at the apical pore field and see this. if you can see any of that stuff. Yeah, it's there. That's pretty clean, actually. Yeah. Just like a lower that image down and take that picture, or zoom back in and take the picture. Either way. Oh, I was going to show you this. Mm -hmm. If you hold down the middle mouse button, yes, you can just pull it. Okay, I was kind of doing that earlier. You already figured it out. Yes. That's the drag version. That way you could just position it where you want it. Especially when things aren't round or you're trying to just get a bit of it. Yeah. I think that's a nice sharp image. Yeah. You're getting all kinds of advice. Let's see. Uh, no bridezilla necessary. Just try... Just tie... Sorry, just tired invitation addressing, yeah. Yeah. She may end up sending them all to random places. <laughs> I, I'm really excited to get married. I'm just kind of stressed out about it. <laughs> but Pacific Plankton says, wedding is a party. Don't spend too much. Yeah. Better I, off not starting in debt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. Weddings are expensive and it's kind of outrageous. Like, some of the venues that we were looking at were like thousands of dollars to rent them for like six, seven hours. Yep. So. They know. They, they know. know. People will pay it. Yep. So. They gotcha. We're actually, we're having it at my church and so I don't have to pay to use the hall for the reception. So. That's, you know, thousands of dollars I'm not having to spend, but. Yep. Yes, I am very aware, like, I've been, I have, like, a Pinterest page, and I've looked at, um, like, I follow wedding tip stuff, and one of the tips on there was if you're ordering, like, cakes or cupcake or whatever don't say it's for a wedding just say it's for like a special event or <laughs> like a party and the people who are catering for us they're gonna be providing cheesecakes so we're just gonna have 
a family friend or a cake anyway, but I was, the place where I was originally going to get cupcakes from, I was just going to be like, I, I just need a hundred cupcakes, like, that's it, nothing for the wedding, because it's stupid how much they mark it up just because you name it wedding, and it's like, okay, it's the same chocolate, chocolate cupcake, it's the exact same. Also, thank you, Pacific. Uh, let's see. So Erica's wedding, the one I just came from, mm -hmm. she was looking at all the different cakes. Yeah. You know, the wedding cake options. I don't know how much she paid for the cakes. I have no idea. Yeah. Assuming it's expensive. And she, the one she liked was like some sort of lavender cake with like a lemon icing on it. Ooh. And she really liked it, and she said, um that her husband and her best friend tried it and they said it tasted like a flower that they were eating and they weren't going to have it and they talked her out of it. And she ended up <laughs> just like, you know, like, I don't know, marbled yeah. cake. But I actually think the lavender one would have been nice. That does sound good. What are you going with? Just chocolate? Straight um, chocolate? I don't know, because we're, what we're doing is like one small cake that we're having like the wedding topper on, just like a one-tier cake. Mm -hmm. And then the people catering they're like yeah like they're like we provide like cheesecake like small cheesecakes for it so we're just gonna do that instead um cheesecake then, wedding cake yeah that sounds good um, if i can spell just get it close H -O -N -E. Pacific said they had their reception in her parents' backyard. Yeah, mine was in my advisor's backyard. <laughs> so was the wedding. <laughs> Our backyard's available if you want to use it. It won't fit 70 people, though. And my backyard's a lot bigger. <laughs> or my parents' backyard is a lot bigger. <laughs> I'm just saying. Can you look up at the head pole, too? Yeah. If it's also in good shape, that would be great. This is the... Um, did you label this as Gumpanema or as Gumpanese? I don't remember. Okay, I was just curious. These are Gumpanema, for sure. This I think I said Gumpanese, but... It's all right. I definitely, like, in, I, I heard you say Gumpanema. We also have Gumpanese. So this, yeah. there's one that's a Gumpanese and one that's a Gumpanema. But I think these are Gumpanema. It doesn't have the horn. That's how you can tell. It looks fine. Yeah. I don't think that's clay. I think that's actually just... Yeah. Yeah, park's fine. Any way to save... There you go. Any way to save some of that money. And, uh, you know, Carlin and I had been together for, like, over a decade. Yeah. So, like, it was sort of funny to, it would be funny to go through all the weird ceremonies stuff. Yeah. Because we're, we're not religious, and also we're not really into ceremonies. So, yeah. So, like, for us, it was just, like, skip all that. But everybody should do whatever they want. If you feel like you need to have the big wedding and that's what you want, you should have it. See, like, ever since I was little, I've always wanted to, like, be married in my church just because it's a smaller church. And, like, people usually get married in a church as close to us because it's bigger and it has more area to fit people in. Yeah. But I was like, we can fit everyone in here. <laughs> this is where I want to have it. And then it's a bonus that it doesn't cost anything to rent our hall. Tell him Mrs. J got married at a zoo. Can you rent a zoo to get married at? You must like, be able to. Uh, yeah. I feel like people would pay to... I know people who would do that. You were surrounded by the big cats and Egyptian decor. It sounds nice. Death Barney, we did a ceremony at Aquarium, then reception Ooh. at Boston Pizza. Kept it super small. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 
I have a lot of family. That's my problem. You know, I have aquarium, a lot of family that I'm close with. An aquarium would be pretty amazing if it was just like yeah. jellyfish behind everybody. Yes. <laughs> that would be awesome. Sharks and jellyfish. lions were roaring that's pretty cool that's awesome you get the giraffe just sort of button in what are you guys doing over there turtles would be pretty cool we went with sea turtles sharks and lionfish that'd be pretty cool too sounds legit though our backyard's a little bit like a zoo we've got goldfish we've got all those birds yeah now we've got cicadas Finally, the cicadas started showing up at our house. Good news, everyone! Thanks Bang. for the follow. I you mean, did some pictures with the jellyfish, yeah. Yeah. I asked Carlin, and we went up to Indy for the wedding, and I asked if we were going to go to the zoo this year. And she's like, I don't want to go out there if it's like 100 degrees, because right now it's super hot here. Mm. And... I was like, oh, I don't want to go out to this stuff. I just want to go take pictures of the butterflies. <laughs> I don't know if they still have the butterfly exhibit at the Indie Zoo. I, like but I just want to go take my macro lens and image butterflies for like two hours. I'd be like, you guys go have fun looking at whatever. I'm going to be over here with the bugs. Do we want to try for a full? Yeah, you can go ahead and take one. It seemed like it was relatively clean. I think you can see everything. Yeah. Oh, I didn't auto burn it. It's okay. Some of this stuff actually looks good. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's hot right now. So. Am I eating them? I haven't, I don't really eat bugs. So, no. Not on purpose anyway. Sometimes they fly in my mouth. I feel like if they want to go in there, it's fine. I, won't, I mean, I'm going to try to keep them out, but we ride a bike or anywhere there's gnats. Sometimes they end up in your mouth. Sometimes up your nose and that sucks. What's that? Sometimes they go up your nose and then that just sucks. <laughs> it's a good reason to wear masks. Yeah. But also if you're riding a bike, like, I don't know. I feel like a mask isn't a fun option. Are you going to get your shot before their wedding? Um... Probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mary. I have a phobia of needles. It's really bad. Do you tell them what happens when they try to give you the shots? I, I literally have to be held down like a five-year-old. <laughs> it's awful. It's <laughs> really, really bad. That's why Mary's still in the mask, though. Yes. Hello in Mexican. Uh, I don't think that's how they say hello in Mexican, is it? Be held down. Would it be worse to be held down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know how to say hello in Spanish. Oh. Okay. I can say good day, good evening. I know some good swear words. I know all the food. I made the mistake of watching a needle go in once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't ever look at them when they put the needle in, but also don't feel anything. I mean, it's just like a little tiny, tiny poke. I hardly even feel it. So... Probably wouldn't bother me. 
He used to think it would. He just put full. I'm here to help. Well, I was trying to see if there... I was just going to name it one after it. But... Yeah, definitely when they're drawing blood, those are bigger needles because they have to be like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mary. I really Should, we shouldn't talk about yeah. this, I guess. I Mary's getting do. triggered over here. Is she doesn't need your needle talk. <laughs> She's uh. like trying to image stuff. You want to stop? That's, that's not one, is it? Or... It looks uh, too small. That's too small. It is a Gumphanema. It's too small to be the one we're looking for. That's the one we just... Yeah, we just we went just to there. We spent so much time, like, right over there, I kind of forgot what else we've looked in the slide. Well, I haven't actually been driving, so I don't know. If you get us lost, that's on you. Is that too small for it? Uh, I don't know. I could zoom in and take a look at it. It looks like it's big enough. Probably in the oh. lower size range, but... The gum... That one actually has horns, I think. If you go down and look at the... They're on the outside edge, but yeah. I think that's the Gumphanies. The horns are like, um, no, or? yes, at the top, the very top, sorry. Like over here? Is that, or That's we... That's right above where you're, right there. Right there. But on the other side, it actually looks pointy. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. That's a Gumphanese for sure. I'd say just do... Mary's getting serious. She's got it at 182,000 times magnification. I can always tell when she's like, nope, I'm going to make this thing. I'm going to make it work. <laughs> Just going to zoom in until you can't zoom in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, actually. Oof. What is she looking at? We're looking at diatoms. Dangling, don't you know what a diatom is after all this time in the channel and on the, the Discord and everything? Uh, Pacific says, stay safe, Mary. I am. Uh, Death of Barney says, I'm stoked. I'm picking up someone's old fossil collection Canada Day and I just can't wait to go through it all. That sounds cool. Sounds like you're getting a present on Canada Day. I think Canada Day is also my birthday, or it's close to it. Well, it'll probably be a, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go home to visit my family at the end of June. Mm -hmm. And so we won't be doing SEM streams or anything probably on the SCM unless Mallory wants to help people while I'm gone. Um, uh, but I'll probably do some streams with my sister, which might be a lot of fun because she's also a photographer. And so we might do some either some bird streams or we might do a, a night astrophotography stream with the two of us, which would be kind of cool. That would be cool. So, 
not with the telescopes, just with our cameras. But um, but we'll probably do a couple of um, different kinds of photos, and uh, we might actually do some sort of like uh, st sort of training how to do uh, night photography with with uh, cameras. Um, because people think it's it's hard, but it's actually really pretty simple once you get the settings on your camera right, and if you have a yes. tripod, yes. Um, and you can get some really gorgeous stuff that way. So, put, putting that on the uh, things we'll, that are coming up, and then one of these days there'll be an actual storm that comes through Terre Haute that doesn't die <laughs> off the moment it gets close to the edge of the town, and I'll do a storm stream, but it hasn't happened. Sounds like my wife is coming. She says they're coming to campus. Nice. But I haven't seen her. It sounds like Laura's basically done all the field work. She hasn't sent me any more pictures though. She's just oh. been sending me updates today. I guess if they get everything done, she can just screw around while she's there. Take some time, go visit the Sierras. That'll be terrible. Yes. Uh... That's the companies. And that's the head pole. Sugar Freddy wants to know, maybe I mentioned this already, what subfold preparation is necessary before they're inserted into the SEM? I have covered it, but I will cover it again. In fact, there was a live demonstration of me putting these uh, samples into the sputter coder about two hours ago. Um, did you look at the foot pole? Did I? Not for this not, one. Not for this one. I don't know if the middle part is also if it's covered or not. It's probably good enough. Yeah. Um, so these samples were prepped by putting them in nitric acid where they were boiled uh, for about two hours. And yeah, that's what I would do is zoom in real close and get that granular stuff. Um, so they were boiled for about two hours in, uh, in basically super high concentrated nitric acid on a hot plate in the lab. And then um, rinsed to get all the acid out. And then sputter coated with gold. So we did the gold sputter coating here, like around 2.30 or something. And so you can go back and watch the VOD if you want. Um, but that's the primary steps that we take. We get rid of all the, get rid of all the organic matter. And then we sputter coat them with gold so that we can actually get the image to collect well. So that the electrons don't charge up on the outside of the particles uh, or the sample material. looks ready. Mary's got the picture taken down to science. Yes. So I feel like it's a good time to end soon. We'll get some more pictures of these on Wednesday. I'll have some time with clean samples instead of ones that are mostly covered in clay. You can see how much clay is on the sample. If you look at that, like, behind the diatom image right there as it's drawing, it, there's like a big crack <laughs> going around the outside edge of the diatom. Um, that's all clay. Um, and so I think the images will be a little bit cleaner 
um, if you're interested in that. And um, I might do some live stuff from the light microscope or um, from my camera soon as well. We'll see. I like to do a couple of little extra streams in my day, in my week, um, besides the SEM ones. But this is a super long one. Uh, I don't think we've ever streamed for like five and a half hours before. Uh, yes. It's, it's been a good one. Uh, we got to look at a lot of Mary samples. We got to look at some of these Gumpho monsters um, from Idaho. And uh, even the ones that were covered in clay, we still had some decent samples that kind of came out from these. So um, we'll at least got some decent images we can compare with the ones that we collected in, in the fall. Um, or maybe it was early winter. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. And um, we'll be back on Wednesday. It will not be an all day stream, probably. <laughs> you wanna zoom in on the ones with the white dots? We can do that. Yeah. Uh, it's always nice just to hang out with people. And also, Sarah, thanks for dropping in. Um, you know, this was sort of like a stream while we worked. Uh, for the most part, uh, and that's a lot of times on the SCM, that's what it ends up being. We're sort of doing work and talking at the same time, just chatting with people. Normally, we put more mustaches on the diatoms, but for, you know, the stream, we just put occasionally a diatom mustache on. Yeah. What about, these samples are from Idaho, uh, so we'll be looking at these samples again, probably the cleaner versions of them on Wednesday, probably starting around noon. Wednesday. Yeah. And it's nice uh, for Mary to get some training. So I feel like she can handle the, uh, the SEM quite well now. She's got the rotation down. She's got the drag. She's got the zoom in imaging. Uh, she just needs some more practice turning it off, basically. <laughs> and then some practice turning it on. So if you really wanted to get a nice clean image of those, uh, just those little dots. Mm -hmm. So. That's about as good as they're gonna get right here, but <laughs> couldn't we? <laughs> yes. Um, go to the beam intensity and lower it to five. Actually zoom back in on those really close like you were. And then um, just check the focus one more time. So yeah, it's about as good as they'll be. And then switch the beam intensity down to five. And you'll see that that actually improves it just a little bit because the quality of the image is a little bit better at um, a higher resolution at five. And um, you can try taking it down to three if you want, the beam intensity. Just sort of show you like how it improves the quality, but it makes the image a little bit dimmer. Um, and you can compensate for that by using the, uh, yeah, the brightness contrast setting, but you might need to slow it down even more. Um, that's about as good as it gets, but I should point out that right now, Mary's at 481,000 times magnification. So, and the scale bar at the bottom is 100 nanometers. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a little challenging to get it any more in focus than that at 480,000 times magnification. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's asking a lot. So even getting like a blurry image at this sort of scale is really kind of pushing the limits of what this instrument can do. Um, if you backed out to like 200,000 just to give them a sense of it, There's 200,000 times. And if you slowed that down to a set, what are we at seven? No, slow it down to six or seven. You could probably almost get away with that as a photo. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically the upper limits. I don't know that you'll get the image any clearer. That's a little sharper. Um, we could take the beam intensity all the way down to one. It's gonna make, you're shaking your head at me. Yes, right. we can.
And this is as, as high resolution as this instrument can get, basically. It's beam intensity. I mean, I guess we could turn it down to a fraction of one, but... Um, and then if you wanted to get that image to be nice and clean, probably we'd have to slow the beam down to at least eight. Um, but that'll give you some idea of, you know, we're at the sort of upper limit of magnification. And you can still see, like, on the edge over there, on the very edge of the diatom, you can start to see those little tiny cracks and on the surface is little cracks. So this image is basically as, as focused as we can get. Um, but we're, you know, we're zoomed way, way crazy in. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, you're in Idaho. Oh, great. Uh, also, Anna is in Idaho. She got the samples for us. So, uh, but th this is, you know, when people say, what's the highest magnification you can get at? You can see we're almost at 500,000 times and you can mm -hmm. still see stuff. It's yes. just that it was a little blurry around the edges. And if we zoomed out to something a little bit more practical, like um, from this image, if you just took the, um, go to the magnification button, or down to magnification, just click on it, and type 100. Yeah. And so it zoomed us out, but that's 100,000 times magnification. And we're at beam intensity one still, so that's like super high resolution. It's super clear in focus. Um, but it's grainy because the speed is, you know, is set really high. If you set the, the speed to 8 or 9 in here, you'll probably get a nice clean image. Um, you know, right very sharply defined image. Um, you can see the little, tiny little pits and stuff on the, like in here, these tiny little pits on the surface. Like those are real. All the stuff you're seeing in here, that's all real uh, texture on the surface. So really when you're down in beam intensity one, you probably need the speed to be kind of in the nine range and then, yeah. um, and then it won't look as quite, quite so grainy. Um, but also it means we'd have to wait for an, a half hour for the photo to collect. So I don't think people want to watch a half hour photo <laughs> develop. They complain when it takes three minutes, like why does it take so long? So um, it's beneficial to average multiple images together to reduce noise. Um, you can actually set up the instrument um, such that it will take the image two or three times and then it will stack them together. Um, but I don't generally find that that's worth it for our practices. I think it's better just to set it on something like this and have it take a half hour long photo if you really needed to get this kind of crazy resolution. Um, I've never needed it to be this high. I mean, um, I've taken pictures at 160,000 times or whatever for fun, basically. And I took a half hour photo and I put it in a beam intensity two or three and then I went to lunch and I came back with my lunch and ate it while it was taking the picture. Um, I feel like I would never do that on a stream. I feel like people would just show up and then, unless they were just talking about something else uh, and the SEM was in the background. Like sometimes we do it just chatting and that's what's going on and the SEM is just sort of background. Um, but I, I generally wouldn't do that um, unless I just wanted to get like a poster kind of image with super high resolution for, for fun um, or for art purposes, basically. So uh, Those dots are little granules of silica. They're just deposited on the outside of the diatom valve. And it's like where, where it puts the extra silica um, when it's building the valve. And they can actually get a lot of them on some of the surfaces, but I don't think that they're anything in particular. They're like the girdle bands probably were touching that surface, so that's why they're kind of flattened. Um, but I don't think that, I think it's just extra sort of silica nodules that, that are on the outside. They're not, they don't serve a purpose um, for the diatom. They don't go through the valve. They don't even, they're not even ornamentation in the, in the strictest sense. So. Okay, well, I think from this we'll probably raid somebody, and I'm going to let, um, I will let uh, Mary decide. Uh, our choices are Little Chook, who hangs out in here and does art. Uh, we could also go visit Jolkson, who's looking at, I think, stuff in a microscope. Oops, that's not going to help. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait. What am I doing? I'm over here trying to move it. Uh, let's see. 
amateur microscopy. Uh, and Mario, who was also in here earlier, uh, who is looking at some bacteria. Sure, let's go with Mario. Let's go with Mario then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, these are samples we're working on describing those species, Father. Uh, or actually, these are new species to science that we're looking at right here. Earlier we were looking at, um, so just go in there, backslash raid. R-A-I-D, uh, space, and then just Mario underscore the science guy, all one word. And if you hit OK, it should show his little picture next to it at the top. Hit Enter. Let's see what happens. That's both science. No. Oh, is it because it should be forward slash, not back oh. slash? Mm, maybe. Yeah, I think you have a forward slash. In there. So earlier, Mary was actually looking mm. at. Um, Good news, everyone. Uh, some work for her uh, stuff that will become master's thesis when she finishes. I know, I thought you had it right the first time. That's weird. I tried both slashes and they both <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> oh well. Hang on, I'll do it from here. Okay. I think I can do it from here. Hang on. We're going to raid Mara the science guy who was hanging out in here earlier. He's a new streamer, and he's just working on getting his PhD, I think. That's such a long chain. It worked when I did it. I don't know what to tell you, Mary. Did I so spell gonna... it wrong? No, because if you spell it wrong, it... Yeah, it was right the first time. Maybe there's a okay. space or something in there in front of it. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter. We got it working. Okay. <laughs> so we should say thanks to all the people who hung out with us all day today. Um, it's been a nice long stream. We looked at a lot of stuff. Um, some of Mary's samples for, I don't know, four hours or so, yeah. three hours, three and a half hours, something. And then uh, we switched over to these samples, looked for some of these gonfanema and... Um, that they're giving you good luck for the wedding planning. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yep, we've had some uh, follows as well. I'm going to see if I can read them before we get to the end of the stream. Five hours and 35 minutes is a new high score. Uh, Father Time, Quang, Nigo, uh, Kenny B. Day, B. B. Bad, Kenny B. Bad, uh, Civic TV 83. Selenic, uh, UFO pizza delivery. That was so long ago, five hours ago. Damage engine. Um, so those are our new followers for today. Thanks for following. And uh, we'll catch you next time. We've got 10 seconds left, so wave bye. All right. Great. See you guys. That will send us there.